together and fight this disease. I've come this way before, traveled to the open door. Circumstances navigate the path, and life happens on the show fast. No, we got lonely sometimes, you see, I know, I know we couldn't make it. Even when I'm off beat, I still land on my feet, and nothing can shake me, cause I know my turn. This is where I am destined to be. I'm not ready to give up. The word Big Lloyd JP. What's up, JP? We're gonna call him JQ tonight. Let's turn this down, DB. Let's turn this down a little bit. Mark Wonderlick, OGE, Triple OG. What's up, 66? I think Route 66 goes all the way to the east coast, too, right? Route 66. Hey, what's up, KJ? OGE, where you been, man? How you doing? What's up, Birdman? Birdman. What's up, KJ? Who else? Who else? Scarlos, Scarlos, Scarlos. Josh, G Brown, R Brown, T Brown. <laughs> the Brown family's in the building. Hey, man, they got a movie and a TV show about y'all, man. What's up, Rob G? I appreciate you, big homie, man. Let's dive right into this, man. Box fan said, I'm going to be first. Mr. T.Y., man. Mr. T.Y., where you been, in Asia? <laughs> T.Y. been getting been getting those two-for-one specials, man. He been out of the country somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> Appreciate you, box fans. All right. Figure we'll change it up a little bit. You know what I mean? Can we take an emotional break a little bit? <laughs> you know what I mean? And... Uh, um, I hate she won't let me have kids. <laughs> oh man, 
Yeah, I figured it will switch it up a little bit, man. Uh, I don't know when Floyd is fighting, but obviously it appears that it's aggressive. It's in its aggressive state in terms of being finalized. Um, I saw a I saw something trending the other week, the other day, about him saying um, where the fight's going to be. Um, I haven't seen, I don't follow Logan Paul, but I'm pretty sure he's going to say something to respond to that. But it's just amazing how, uh, how boxing has transformed itself into some type of like, I wouldn't say comedic, but it's redefined itself because when the XFL came in, you know what happened? The NFL got them right out of there. They're like, nah, nah, nah. Ain't no way in hell y'all can succeed. Nah, nah, nah. Ain't gonna happen. You know what I mean? Those big comp- big sports finds a way to eliminate the competition. Whether it's behind the scenes and not giving them stadium deals. Not allowing them to um, find ways to throw monkey wrenches into their business, right? Um, but it seems like the exhibition is pretty much booming now. Business is booming now for that. You know what I mean? Logan Paul is going to fight Floyd Mayweather at some point. You got uh, Evander Holyfield fighting McBride. And I would say that the reason, a lot of the reasons why. I shouldn't say a lot, but a a great percentage of the reason why this is happening is because the best are not fighting the best in boxing. And uh, so it's. uh, And so that's what we have to look forward to, man. We got a lot to look forward to as it pertains to that, man. Rest in peace, Shock G. It's Shock G. The one that put the satin on your panties. <laughs> oh, man. What a time. What a time. What a time. You know what I mean? I think I was a fifth or sixth grade when that song came out. Somewhere in there. I remember being a little kid, though, doing that dance, right? Uh, you know what I mean? I never seen his nose, though. What does his nose look like? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, so now we're in a critical state now because, and and also I want to talk about this too. Jamal Charlo better get him a PR expert because I think that was bad PR on his part. He knew what he was insinuating when he put the picture out. He ain't stupid, dog. Uh, I I, I don't, see, I go to court every so often and you can't plead ignorance in court. I don't plead ignorance in real life. He knew exactly what he was doing when he uh, posted that picture. He wanted people to believe that Mark Breland was coaching him, right? Or assistant coaching. And like I said, yes, I didn't care. Ronnie Shields is his boy. But he wanted us to believe that that was happening. And now he posted today. Don't believe the hype. Don't. Don't. And um, and between that and a terrible opponent, fans like, man, fuck you. At the end of the day, man, you you just going to keep on playing these games? You know, so I think Jamal Charlo and his brother is throwing subtle jabs. His, his brother is eating him alive, dog. I fight the best. <laughs> I'm a lion. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? His brother be throwing jabs at it like a son of a gun. So. So I think we can go anywhere we want as it pertains to that. And uh, yeah, why else would he post it? it, it, it and then he backpedals. Same way he backpedaled on David Benavidez, man. That motherfucker been moonwalking for the past two months, man. I uh, Damn, so Mark Bielen, no, he said they're not training them. They're just friends. So they just took a picture. Why would you post that picture? You know what I mean? It was just. That was just dumb. 
he knew he wanted to get that attention. But when the attention was negative, he like, oh, I guess I better take down this tweet like LeBron James, you know? It gets hot in that kitchen, man. It get hot in that kitchen. Yeah, he backpedaling. Then Dion, all the motherfuckers put together. Daryl Green, Champ Bailey, all of them. Everson Walls, all of them. You know what I mean? You know, and I do wish LeBron James had left that tweet up. You know, the phone lines are open, so feel free to call. Appreciate you, box fans, man. Here's what I think. LeBron James is in between. And, and, and this is why it's, it's challenging to be in between in real life. He wants to go full throttle, but he got all these corporation sponsors. You know what I mean? He has he has thriving relationships, uh, making great money, has great influence, impacts people's lives immediately. I mean, faster than melatonin. You know what I mean? Like, like LeBron James is in America's bloodstream like no tomorrow, right? And he enjoys that. He enjoys being a good guy. He really, really enjoys that. And there's a side to LeBron, and this is just me looking at it, I'm not, and, and I'm not condemning him at all. By no means is this a, a condemnation on LeBron. I'm just telling you what I see when I read his posts and I see him. And then there's a part of him that wants to be a full-blown nigga, that wants to be Malcolm X, that want to be Nate Nat Turner, Nate Parker, you know what I mean, who just want to... He wants to be the exemplar, the exemplary black man. I see it in him, but he he doesn't take that step, and and that's the blockade. Now that's the blockade that I I believe that Malcolm X was talking about. Now I do believe LeBron James is a great asset. This by no means is condemnation on him. Uh, and I'll get to that point in a second. What up, three four seven? How you feel, man? Peace, peace. Only what's happening. This is T.Y. I know, I know. Good. I know. Yeah, man. Hey, now, I don't know if you recall, but one of the last times I caught this show, I kind of brought it up twice. It was one of my, my scenarios. I was telling you that back when Mayweather had offered Thurman the fight, you know, but Thurman had to face Spence first. I said that was the turn in the Twilight Zone. That was the turn in the Matrix. Because I said, yo, give it another two years, Floyd is going to come back and fight. If they would have fought, but nothing happened. And the biggest star at the time was May, uh, what, uh, McGregor. And now, again, he waits another couple of set of years. These dudes ain't doing nothing, you know? And I, and I, and I, and I put it on Thurman for not taking that fight. He should have took that Spence fight. If he would have took that Spence fight, I feel Floyd would have came back two years later and either fought him Spence or Crawford, whoever would have been on the top, but um, these dudes been stalling, stalling, and um, and I, I mentioned it on H Money Show just the other day as well, and um, I'm not mad at the fight. I can't say I'm interested, but it was predictable. I get that. You remember I, me telling you that? I don't remember you telling me that, but uh, you sound very believable. Yeah, I'm giving you credit though. But uh, yeah, man, good, good to hear your voice, man. Actually, it's, it's great uh, to hear you. Screenshot of you and Bill talking. Oh, and did I, I just came on YouTube just to see if you was on, and, and the show just popped up. So, uh, oh, that's I'm, I'm here, bro. I got you, man. Keep, keep doing your thing. Appreciate you. I'm Thank gonna you. jump off. Appreciate you, bro. Ty is back, y'all. Ty is back. So, so I think that LeBron is somewhere in between. You know what I mean? Like, and and and. Michael Mack says that athletes can only go so far because they have partners attached to their success. And their partners have under other agendas. I remember DB asking Nate Parker, uh, how do you do a black film knowing you got to get white money? You understand what I'm saying? And and feel free to go check out the interview. But he I mean, but he says it's tough, but you got to do what you got to do. And uh, but. And he did get some black support from some athletes as well. So that's another way how athletes can help by supporting the cause with supporting people who have a free voice, you know, who have the ability to create freely and not have a contract with like a, 
ESPN, NBA, Nike, and so on and so forth. But I think uh, I think it's wearing on LeBron, though. It really is because a man of that caliber does not. There's no reason for him to take down a tweet. You understand what I'm saying? Every the moment he tweets, if it stays up five minutes, it doesn't touch the half a million people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it don't make no sense. Like if I take down a tweet, you know, ain't no one gonna see that shit. You know what I mean? But when he put shit, it's too late. <laughs> so, so I think that uh, it's 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 literally wearing on him. So I wish him well, man. I I want him to put put uh put both feet in the tub. You know what I mean? Stop checking the temperature. That would be great. You know, that would be great. That would be awesome if 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 he just said, fuck it. I'm going all in. I'm putting all my resources in. Um, I didn't accomplish everything in the NBA that a man could possibly accomplish outside of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar scoring, outside of Kareem scoring title, you know. What's up? What's up? This is what it feels like. What up? What up? What's up, Fred? How you feel, man? Feeling good, man. What you got? Hey, man, I'm I'm that Charlo thing. I saw you touch on that early. Man, I'm disappointed, bro. I I, I totally agree with you, bro. I'm, at this point, the one that was little Charlo, he big Charlo now, man. That, that man, the real Charlo right there. This one, I don't know, man. You know what he's doing with that with the with the picture, Fred? He, I, I almost feel like he's jealous of Deontay Wilder, man. Like, bro, how are you going to go against Deontay Wilder? You've seen, and I know he's seen the facts, man. It's just, it's, I almost feel like jealousy to me, Fred. Mm. It really does. Mm. And at this point, I ain't watching his fights. I'm not supporting them. Wow. I don't care if he fight, whoever he fight. Uh, uh, man. Cause Fred is blatant. Like, <laughs> it's whenever I hear people come on and say, "Ah, oh, this and that," like, bro, like, have you seen the facts? There's an indentation in that glove. Like, dog. Like, I don't know, man. But I ain't messing with that dude no more, Fred. It's it's it's, it's a done deal, man. I don't know. Not the even if he fight David Benavides. What's what's up? Not even if he fight David Benavides. You're not gonna ah! see that. <laughs> all right i rest my case then i rest my case uh, no, no. Yeah, right. i don't know friend yeah we'll you'll, be watching, you'll, be watching, like, dude, you'll be watching it you'll be watching you'll be watching hey friend i'm gonna do what you do i'll go to somebody's house and say they had the tv on <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one that's a good one that's a good one that's a good one, that's a good one. <laughs> nah but uh, man not, i'm not gonna go out of my pocket man i just don't respect that man because yeah Shit, man, like, we, we, Fred, how many times sat up here and, you know, demanded, like, Canelo and, you know, videos being made of all that stuff, like, fight the man, do this, and he turned around and he, like, like, he flipped everybody off, man, like, I don't, I don't respect that, and even as a joke, that's not a joke, bro, I do play with that man's life, like, how would you feel, how would he feel if the, if the shoe was on, on the other end, you know what I mean, like, what if, what if he was the one with the, with the with the fracture in the skull like Deontay has, like I don't respect that man. Right. So, uh, yeah, man. And and until these boxers start fighting each other, this whole circuit is gonna continue because they're gonna pick up the money that these other bums are picking up, Fred, mm-hmm. by not fighting each other. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying so. Right. It is what it is. There's money to be made. That's obvious. When uh, what's his name selling 1.5 million pay per views, the money's out there, Fred. Mm-hmm. They won't fight each other, bro. Right. And I, and I, as a man, as a, like at the end of the day, I'm a boxing fan, man. I don't care about none of that, man. I was, I'm, you see me, I always hard on when Leo Santa Cruz was on the protection plan. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, all these guys that are on protection plans fight. You gonna make money? But I'm over, man. But yeah, definitely supporting. Uh, Leo Charlo got upgraded a big Charlo today for me. <laughs> so, yeah, Fred, man. Hey, keep doing your thing, bro. You know I love the show, so appreciate you. Keep supporting, bro. Appreciate you. All right, man. All right, one. All right, right. right. yeah. So, you know what I was thinking too about that. DB never, and and I I think the show was ending, and we and he, he was in his final take, 
And I remember saying this about three months ago, and I didn't get a chance to respond to, to DB that night. And I, that was the night when I went on my rant, and y'all was like, Fred this, Fred that, Fred this, Fred that. You know what I mean? Um, when you've been, yeah, they love us in here. Don't, don't, they love us in here. Don't worry about it. Um, when, when you've been holding, like, let's just say the red, the black, and the green flag for so long, and and the fighters don't respond. Like, for example, I did a whole campaign against Canelo. Fighters still supported him. Fighters flew, spent their money, spent their hard-earned money and this and that. And I said, oh, it was after the Canelo Yeardrum fight. I remember I, I, I had one of them where I went off for about an hour. Um, I don't care at this point. I really don't care at this point. You know, what I mean, especially when um, um, the fighters don't care. And the example, the other example I use is how how we're aggressive with the WBC as it pertains to them. Uh, kind of like how how Reggie Owens is real aggressive with Mauricio Suleiman and and gets how he feels off his chest. You know what I mean? Um, the fighters don't support Reggie. Yeah, they love us in here. They uh, they don't support you, Reg. They going to hold that belt, get those bonuses, and keep their life moving. Meanwhile, you're saying... You got to do this, WBC president. I think that energy should be geared towards the fighters. Obviously, express your resentment towards who you feel. I'm by no means am I going to tell another grown man who supports his lifestyle to say vehemently, "You got to do it like this." Not unless it's life or death, but th this is just how you feel. I think that similar energy needs to be towards these black fighters that are carrying these belts that that we say are racist. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? So, um, I think that, uh, I got, yeah, I got a, some wrenches. Yeah. But I think that, uh, I don't care at this point. I really don't care. You know what I mean? If I want to watch a fight at this point, I'm going to watch a fight. Yeah, I'll do that now. You understand what I'm saying? Because I did it for so long and, and, and they don't. And, and I think many of them don't value or respect the. Fact you understand that, what I'm saying? Because I that fans don't. Uh, they love you in here, TBA. <laughs> they love you in here, man. They love you in here. Man, fuck these trolls, man. man I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we famous, man. What you got, man? Hey, uh, man, first, man. Hey, that was a great interview you did earlier, man, with, uh, with, uh. Oh, with thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, that was dope, man. But, uh, so what's your thoughts on the fights this weekend? I don't know, but I think we got, some, we got a knockout card, though, right? Yeah, we got some good fights on ESPN. We got a good little undercard on there. And Who's uh, fighting? The who's fighting? You said who's fighting? Yeah, who's fighting? Emmanuel Navarrete versus uh, Christopher. Oh, he gonna knock his ass out. Oh yeah, that but but that fight gonna be fun because Christopher Diaz is durable and Navarrete throws a lot of punches. So uh, we'll see. You know what I mean? Yeah. We'll and, definitely uh, see. Edgar Ber Edgar Berlanga fighting. Yeah, I want to see that. He's fighting a step up guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He fighting Demar Nicholson. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's that's totally good. And uh, in the UFC, you got uh, Kamaru Uzman fight Jorge Masvidal. I'm ordering that fight courtesy of DJ. Thank you, DJ. Appreciate you. Yeah, man. I think uh, 
man, I ain't gonna lie, I think Uzman gonna stop him this time. But it's gonna be it's gonna be tough because now you know uh, George Jorge Masvidal he got a game plan now and he got a and he got a full camp. So you know, it, I mean, I, I think Kamara's gonna stop him, but we are gonna see. Mm-hmm. And then we got uh, the bullet. Valentina Shevchenko versus Jessica Andrade. Man, I think uh, I think the bullet gonna take that. I think she gonna. I think it's her overall skill set. I think she's gonna win that fight. And then we got uh, what was it? What was it first? Oh yeah, um, damn, I forgot. Oh, uh, Wally, the the chi- we got it's like a Chinese champion versus uh, Thug Rose Nama Muniz. That's gonna be a good fight too. I think uh. The Chinese champ, she gonna take it. I don't know nothing about that, but I'm not gonna go with what you say though. I'm gonna go. With, <laughs> I'm gonna go with DB say. DB's gonna call in in about ninety minutes, and uh, I, I'm gonna go with him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what? Hey, what? Foy said, "Jabba, jabba, jabba, jabba." I don't know what that means, but I heard you say, "Champ, champ." <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, but uh what you were saying about the uh Logan Paul and uh Floyd Mayweather, that's what I feel about it. Fighters are gonna continue to get passed up as long as they not fight nobody. You know, they, they can bitch and they can whine and they can moan about oh like why is Floyd fighting Logan Paul? Who are you fighting? You're not fighting nobody. You have not they, fighters they not they not having meaningful fights. They fight once a year, once, twice a year against a tune up fight and you know damn well who who's gonna win the fight before the fight's even even signed really you feel me mm-hmm. I, I mean think about it Floyd got a tougher opponent than uh Jamal Charlo exactly the only, <laughs> thing is the only thing intriguing is because that Logan Paul weighs like this the way right he only needs one punch yeah and he can really fight off his back step against back foot against Floyd and fight real comfortable in that fight. You understand? Because Floyd ain't going to be no inside fighter. Floyd not going to want to go inside. No, he's not. So Logan Paul can really fight with distance against Floyd and just try and punch through his guard and see what happens. Now, I think Floyd's going to dominate him, but I'm just saying I think Floyd is the master box. I'm By no means am I going to be uh, Freddie Pendleton as motherfucker. Y'all got the wrong Freddie in this one. But, uh, that motherfucker was funny, dog. But he can, he's going to get about, he's going to get about eight punches. And those eight punches got to be, rawr, like, like he just literally got to rear back and just, you know what I mean? And see if he can punch through Floyd's guard. But I, but, but I can't see him using a jab against Floyd. And nah, definitely not. But I will say Floyd has a tougher opponent than uh, Jamal Charlo. Because of the 30 pound weight difference, 40 pound weight difference. Yeah. He can literally clinch Floyd for two rounds and then fight and then start the fight in the third round and see what happens. Yeah. I wonder, like, how many rounds do you think it's going to be? You think it's gonna oh, be man. Floyd going to punch circles round. around him. Floyd going Floyd to play with that kid, man. But, <laughs> but, but, but he is going to, I mean, all many of you guys have sparred. He's going to get a chance to throw the right hand. And he just got to rear back and just punch through Floyd's guard and see how Floyd responds. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it ain't no boxing match. It, it's like he got five to eight punches with that right hand. You, you know what I mean? And that, and and I think that's the fight. So. Um, yeah, he going to catch Floyd. Yeah, he ain't going yeah, to mm-hmm. get played. He gonna oh, Floyd going to toy with him. Like, yeah, Floyd going to toy with him. Oh, Floyd definitely gonna toy with him. Yeah. So we'll see though. But you know, Floyd gonna be very prepared for the fight. He's gonna be in shape because he, I mean, there is a one percent chance now. Yeah. Yeah, but Floyd should dance around that kid though. Floyd should have fun. And 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 I do believe it's gonna be somewhere in Miami. I don't think that's a Vegas fight. I think that's a Miami fight. Because Vegas is too many serious people. You know what I mean? You, you take that shit to Miami, Miami night. You know what I mean? It's more of an event in Miami. I don't think people will subscribe to it in Florida. Or, I mean, in Vegas as much because 
that that fight city is too serious. So right, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, one more thing. Yeah, uh, please. So what's your thoughts on if Jamal Charlo doesn't get a uh, all black undercard with the, with this fight on Juneteenth? Then it wasn't made for Juneteenth. Because obviously they know how to put a black card together. We saw one this past Tuesday, <laughs> right? Yeah. And right. he knows how to put a Mexican card together because we're watching it May first, May fifteenth, uh, and so on and so forth. So, so uh, um, I'll be. Di- I-, I wouldn't be disappointed. I-, I would be pleasant. I would be happily surprised if if they honored Juneteenth. You understand, like from a uh, from a programming perspective. Not just say, oh, June 19th, uh, hey, Al Bernstein, make sure you say June 19th is Juneteenth, you know, the, the the day they freed the slaves and et cetera, et cetera. You understand what I'm saying? I think that they should be aggressive from the programming perspective and and the planning for the project, for the fight card, the show, excuse me. Yeah, yeah they got a Puerto Rican card. All the fighters are Puerto Rican Saturday on top rank, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so they know what they're doing, dog. And the best fighters from that card, guess where they going? On the undercard of June twelfth, guaranteed. I'm, that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Well, uh, that's my call, for I'm back in the chat. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah. All right. All right. One. Well, that nigga called from a landline. That shit sounded like a. <laughs> that shit sounded like the cord is loose. <laughs> oh yeah, boxing does need a complete overhaul. I don't know how. Yeah, Ring City. I knew it was on, but uh, Derek James. Yeah, he went one and two. He should have went two and one. I thought. I thought that one sixty eight pounder won. Uh, the other guy just didn't want to. What was that other guy doing? The, the first Derrick James fight, he got on the inside just to clinch. I don't know, man. I don't know. It it, 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 it was like when the, um, you guys ever been to the horse races and the horse race and the horse betrays his jockey? That's what it looked like. You understand what I'm saying? When, um, yeah, Burley got some, Burley needs some work. I mean, he's definitely not a finished product. He needs some work. Oh, speaking of work, we have um, on the Sunday, we got a guest coming on this Sunday. I'll tell you who it is right now. Um, I'll tell you right now. What's his name? Uh, what's the fighter who won? Frank what? Frank Martin. Frank Martin to be in Sunday. So that'll be dope. About 9.15, Frank Martin, 9.15 PST, Frank Martin to be in the barbershop. So, so that'll be pretty cool. It'll be an introduction. Hopefully he'll call Tank out and talk some big shit so he can go boxing viral and, and he can make some noise. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it, it's going to be great meeting him, you know? And uh, I know he felt pressure, though. Derek James go 0-2. I know he felt pressure on that. But he styled on that guy, man. He blinded him with that jab. And boom, kind of how Wilder did Ortiz. Boom. Oh, I got my damn mouse. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, Fred? What's how up? How you doing? I'm great, man. What's poppin'? Yeah, man. I just want to piggyback off what you were saying. You were talking about uh, Frank Martin. Yeah, Frank Martin. Yeah, he look good. Man, man, that kid, how old is he? I don't know. He look older, though. Is he older? I, yeah. No, no, they say he was young, like what, 23? Really? I'm not sure. I'm just really? guessing. I'm just guessing. Mm, I had the TV I heard, on like, mute. I had my TV on mute. So um, if he's that young, man, PBC, uh, you know, Our Haven, whoever, they need to put invest money on him. I'm telling you, uh, he was fighting the guy who had power with both hands, putting pressure. Uh, he had the guy who was fighting with slow, but he had power. And he, he took it away from him by getting on the inside, smothering him, clinching, hitting. And not getting hit, what they say, swimming without getting wet, and just just putting it on the on the guy, man. Dude was tough, and he broke him down and got him up out of there. 
I mean, that's the fighter you want to invest in when if they're that young, they invest in the body, they got good footwork, they know how to uh, use their defense, know how to slip out without getting caught too much. Um, and he did get caught a couple of times, but that's boxing. You don't get touched and hit. And, you know, he got, it, it, they need to invest in that guy. If I'm them, if I'm Al Hammond, PBC, I will put him in there with Roly. You let him get mm. Roly up out of there. Uh, I like that fight. He, yeah. yeah. In 26. I think he could take, yeah, I think he could beat Roly right now. I like that. He got that. the skills. I like that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think if they match them up, I think he beats Roly and probably by stoppage, late stoppage. Um, you got the new guy that everybody can look to because a lot of people don't like Roly. And you know, when you got a fighter that people don't like, that gives that's buzz right there. That's 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 basically numbers. So if I was them, I'm putting them up there right now. Oh, I saw somebody in the chat, they say he's twenty six. Well then yeah, he needs to be on the move right now. ASAP. Roly's what, twenty five? That's a perfect matchup right there. Perfect matchup. A guy like Roly who's wild, he's a hard puncher. Uh, he's got good stamina. Who comes forward versus Frank Frank Martin, who 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 can box and move and bang too. Uh, um, that's a good matchup, man. I really like it. I think they should do that. Roley versus Martin. Um, I don't know who they could put down Earl's uh, undercard with Lucas. I mean, look, PBC, how at your boy. I could do the matchmaker. Yeah, matchmakers is trash. Look what they did to that boy, uh, Javante Davis. Boy, what's his name? Malik Hawkins. Oh, look they what destroyed they did him. him. They destroyed him. Look what they did. He may they never fight again. Dude. Yeah, they put they put a prospect in there with a guy who got a body, who got a legit body on his record in the ring. What was they fucking thinking? What was they thinking? He was a prospect, and they put him in there with somebody who got a legit body. And then they put Roley in there with somebody who can box and is taller than him. What like who is their matchmakers? Who was that dude they said that they signed the, the Mexican guy, the Spanish dude, who's the communications dude at PBC? I think you mentioned that in your oh, pad, I don't in know the, his uh, name. No, no, he's uh he's Showtime PBC. So he's gonna be working oh, a lot with but, but he'll be working a lot with uh Mayweather promotion because Mayweather promotions look, is uh is showtime. So they'll be yeah, working. See, see that shit don't make sense. I did some research on that guy and he has nothing about boxing in his background. Not one bit of lick of boxing. He's mainly a guy that is soccer. baseball yeah, soccer. and Spanish and Spanish and mostly he has like uh the, the Latin like Latin stuff. So I'm just figuring out what like who well, how is the interview process for all these things when it comes to boxing to the judging to these people who get these positions. I really want to know what's the interview process. Fred, you're more into the uh in, in that realm. What do you think these interview process goes like? I'm I'm just really confused about. When it comes to these people who do the matchmaking, the judges, the refs, uh, like, well, like, how in the hell do they get to A to B when they pick these people? Someone who wants to be controlled and is satisfied with a low, with a low pay. You know what I mean? Honestly, hey, we'll give you sixty thousand dollars. You just fly across the country. You'll be in hotels. You don't have no kids. You don't have no wife. Okay, come on. Are you? That's, <laughs> that's the requirements. I'm being dead ass. I mean, that's, that, yeah, that's, that's, that just sucks, man. Yeah. I, can, I can find some people probably around down the street who's huge boxing fans who got who knows how to do all that technical technical stuff as well. Right. That you can that can do better than these guys. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I'm, I'm talking on all levels. Right. They actually care for the sport. That that you know, they're business minded as well. They they know the business. They're not just dumb boxing fans. They don't know what they talk about. But they also know the business too. Mm. And, and they don't get and they don't get picked over. I guess like you said. They're not they're they're not willing to bend uh, at whatever somebody else says or just told being told to do all the time and that hurts the sports and that and this is this is what I'm talking about these matchups man these matchups got to get better we need to see number one number two look let's call out the people who've been ducking we got to start going back to roasting these guys just do a one once a week roast session on the fighters who are ducking the day and disrespecting the sport like Ryan Garcia the biggest the king cap the king of all cappers right now. Look, I know he's not a world champion. I know that he so he shouldn't be having his foot to the fire that much. But f that man, that dude ducked Devin Haney. Uh, he ducked Jorge Linares. He ducked Javante Tank Davis. He talked so much trash, and nobody in the media is calling him out on it. They're doing interviews with him, and they're not calling him out, asking him why you said all that stuff, and not putting his foot to the fire, his feet to the fire. He needs to be called out. I don't care if he's not a world champion. 
He talked like he is a world champion. Mm. He talked like he got four all-time greats on his resume, five or 12 great fighters on his resume, and a couple of decent fighters, and he's like a five-division world champion. Stop the cap. They need to be called out on this. This dude got a Gatorade deal for what? There's so many great fighters before him. They didn't get no fucking Gatorade deal. Did Jermaine Teller get the Gatorade deal? Bernard Hopkins? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? And uh, I can't even go to fighters who are who, who are fundamentally better than him. How about um, Emmanuel Augustus? Emmanuel mm. Augustus. That dude was was crowd pleasing. Fun fighter. Fought whoever. Even on a, a day's notice. Doesn't matter. They gave this boy a Gatorade deal for what? For getting dropped by Luke Campbell? The best part of the fight was him getting dropped. It was. That body shot that he hit Luke Campbell with, that should have been Kane. Luke Campbell was literally having the high guard up the entire fight. The entire fight. And it took him seven rounds to get that. Seven. That's why they don't want him near the Devin Haney's of the world or the Javante Davises. They know that boy don't got no ring IQ. He's got speed and power, but no ring IQ in there. No ring IQ. And that's not going to save him eventually. And he knows that. That's why he wants to retire early. And who's next? Uh, Jamal Charlo. You got to get your feet to the fire as well. You got to get this too. You can't talk trash about another fighter. I don't care if you were talk, talking trash about a heavyweight. You can't talk trash and say this and that out your mouth and disrespect another fighter and not expect to get nothing back. You disrespected that boy David Benavidez like you wanted to smoke with him. You literally said you would break his neck. You would snap his neck. He did say that. He did. Like, are you kidding me? Dude, like, like, if I was Rick, I would be like, look, David, I'll pay you money to go take a flight to wherever Jamal is and confront him about that shit. This is some bullshit. What are y'all doing? Y'all hurting the sport by this. You got Jake Paul. People think Jake Paul is a representative of boxing because these mm-hmm. fighters are ducking. If we get number one, number two every freaking Friday, we won't have to worry about some guy from Ohio who's, ba- who's not even a boxer being uh, now the cash cow of boxing. Like, this shit has got to stop, man. This for real. This this is bullshit. Everybody's working hand-to-hand together, and they're keeping the status quo. I'm tired of the status quo. Don't get me wrong, Fred. I'm, you know me. I'm going to keep it 100. I'm happy that we're getting, what, five undis- uh, undisputed fights or four. You know your girl, Fred Sean Cruz, Desire. She's getting an undisputed fight on the uh, trailer. On the she call is. The I'm, glad. I'm happy for it. I'm happy for her. I'm happy time. for her. Yeah. She deserves it, even though she's oh. with Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy, even though, but she deserves it. But, uh, oh, that's another person. One more person before I leave, because I know a lot of people want to call in. I got to roast this. One more person. Okay. Tio Fima Lopez, man. Hey, I'm happy for what you did to Bob. I loved it. I loved it. What you did to Bob was cold. I respect it. I loved it. I laughed so much. It, I loved it. I, I was so happy. But, man, you got Devin Haney, goddammit. You're not undisputed. You are not undisputed. And Mauricio Sullivan came on here twice and said, you are not undisputed, basically. You are not the WBC champion. You are a franchise. And you asked for it. You lied twice. You said you didn't ask for franchise. You did. That's how you got to be a franchise champion. You was a goddamn liar. You switched your tune. You said you wanted to end Devin Haynes' career. Now you're fighting George Gamboso. Who cares about the belts? Drop that belt. You're paying all them sectioning fees for what? When you say you want to move up and fight Josh Taylor and, and Ramirez, knowing darn well Bob is not going to let that happen. Stop the cap. Mm. Fight Devin Haney after this fight, or you'll get more more of your feet to the fire. You got to call these, fight, these fighters out every week, Fred. We got to. We got to stay on them. Because some of their fans, some of them themselves are even listening. We got to put them on the, uh, on the ropes. We got to, because they're going to keep getting away with this. They can't get, keep getting away with this. It's 2021. Do you know how many days I wish that we can get throwback fighters back in the day to be to get put into a time machine and put uh, in here in today's world uh, world and let them wreck havoc on all the weight classes and get rid of these pretenders every fucking week to get rid of these pretenders? Can you can you imagine Roberto Duran at 135 right now? Clean up, Prime Floyd at 147. Clean up. He's cleaning up house. And the last, just the last thing before I get off, Devin Haney, he's, he's coming up, man. Hey, check him out versus Jorge Linares. It's going to be a show. 
It's going to be nice. spectacular. I have a good feeling, man. He's going to get tested. He may even get dropped. But I have confidence that he, he can get b- back up and he can win the fight. It's a tough fight, but I think he's going to show out and show up. And sh- and please support that kid, man. He wants he wants to work. He wants to work. Support Devin Haney. It, hey, hey, it's the dream. It's the dream, man. Support Devin Haney. I'm out, Fred. Peace. 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 Okay, he got Hey, his girl showed up, y'all. Your girl showed up on you, huh? Your girl showed up. She gave you a deal. He feeling good today. <laughs> you know what I mean? He got a good he got a good fight party coming up. You know what I mean? His girl gave him half price today. So he feeling good, you know. Um, you know what they may should do? What they may should do, um, is combined Tank Davis pay per view with um Floyd Mayweather's pay-per-view. Just put it all on June 26th and throw it in the stadium. You know what I mean? Throw it in Miami. Y- you know what I mean? Just throw it. May as well. Uh, that's what I say. You know, so. Um, why not? From a programming perspective, it makes sense, you know. Tank ain't breaking no records. What Tank going to do? Tops 300,000 buys? You know, just put Tank as the co-main event. And uh, that'll be it. Because if they do it in... See, this is going to be real interesting. Check this out. If Floyd goes before Tank Davis... That's going to cut Tank's pay-per-views probably by about 15%. You understand what I'm saying? Because who's going to have a $400 cable bill? I wouldn't. I don't, man, listen. I'm not giving no I'm not giving them corporations $400 for watching TV. Um So if Floyd fights before June 26, he's going to cut in the tanks pay per views. So Floyd should negotiate. He should build tanks profile. They go in the camp together and blow it, blow it the fuck up. What's up, DB? Don't blow it the fuck, man. When I say blow the pay per view out the water, blow the pay per view out the water. Everybody gets, it feels good for everybody. Erickson Lubin gets a bump. Jason Rosario gets a bump. Tank Davis gets a bump. Mario Barrios gets a bump. And you got Logan Paul and Floyd as the main event. You know, like, it. it that's the only move that makes sense. Because t- to tell a boxing fan to choose between Tank Davis and Floyd Mayweather, I don't care what y'all gonna say. Oh, well, well y'all gonna say, Tank Davis, I like majority of y'all, right? But y'all gonna buy the fight anyway. <laughs> Saturday morning, you're gonna be like, well, I ain't got shit to do, man. The yard work done, the kids are done playing baseball and soccer. You know what I mean? Shit. Do I want to go on this date? Do I want to watch boxing? You know what you're gonna say? I want to watch boxing. So, and then they could bump it up to a hundred dollars because tanks pay per view can't be bigger than seventy five dollars. So you charge all those millennials, Generation X, Z, W, R, A, B, C, D, W, V, you know, you charge them $100. You understand? And you make it go. No, uh, it's a Showtime pay-per-view. So Snoop wouldn't be coming. But you get Al Bernstein. (laughs) So, uh, So I think like that would be the move. That would be the move. To consolidate them, Stephen Espinoza, and uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're listening to me right now. Somebody in your team is listening. Consolidate that and make that the event of of the first week of summer. Actually, the first three days of summer, June 26. What summer start? June. Oh, summer starts on June 26, right? Oh, boom. That's the that's the marketing. It got to be in Miami. Then you throw that shit in Miami. On an outdoor stadium, oh man, you blow that shit off the roof. What? 
And Floyd will bring Drake out. Floyd will bring, you know, he'll bring that crowd out. Tank will bring that crowd out too. And guess what? You got the biggest event boxing's had in a long time because now Tank is a name now. Oh, June 21st. Thank you. So, uh, but hey, summer nights in Miami. That's it. That's the move. That's the move. I think that makes a whole lot of sense from an economic perspective, from, from our perspective, it makes a whole lot of sense. All right. Because we would be paying $180 to watch both fights because Floyd is going to be a hundred dollars because you got to watch it in HD and shit, you know? So that's a hundred dollars. Tank is $80, $74.99 plus tax. Um, that fight smells like Miami to me. You, you know what I mean? That card smells like Miami. You got Erickson Lubin and and uh, Coach Cunningham down there already. Jason Rosario trains down there. Man. S. Jones, we just did it. We just did it. We just fucking did it. We just fucking cracked the Morris Code. We just fucking broke the Morris Code in the barbershop. I'm about to make a post. One night in Miami. Boom. There we go. One night in Miami. One night in Miami. Oh, man. I appreciate it. I'm giving everybody a round of applause. Thank you, S. Jones and everybody else. I'm posting that shit as soon as the show ends. One night in Miami. Boom. Thank you. There it is. There it is. That's an Atlanta fight for sure. Yeah, it would be. But Miami. But Miami. Guess what? No state tax. <laughs> the fight should be in Miami. You know what I mean? I don't know Georgia's tax laws, but Miami, and guess what? They already live there. New York, Miami, LA. They already live there. They already live there. Um, uh, no, it's not original, but it's catchy. You know, it's catchy. Um, so I think Miami would be the best option. Vegas, you can't take that fight to Vegas. You can't take Jake Paul. Floyd Mayweather to Vegas. Who the fuck? <laughs> nah, that stadium going to be jam-packed. Trust me. That stadium will be jam-packed. It's an event in Miami. Miami's never had anything like it since 1964. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the last time they had something, no one showed up. You know, it was Laura. And Keith Thurman, no one showed up to those fights. What did he fight? He fought the Puerto Rican kid, hit him with a body shot, and he and he made it out the round. Yeah, there it is. Save your money. Save your money. June 26th. That's a good idea. I love it. I love that idea. One night in Miami. There it is. Yeah, there it is. I like it. Who would be the fourth fight? So the fourth fight would be a Cuban. Who do you? He got to be young. He got to be someone who got to be next. Oh, but Benavidez would beat the shit out of Belonga right now. Uh, who would be the young Cuban? I don't know no young Cubans. Oh, 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 no, no. That kid that's 3-0, and oh, three and I don't know his name. He fights at 168. Frank Sanchez is a Canelo fighter, but he can still come over. But he's 3-0, and oh, and he looked phenomenal. He looked phenomenal on that Fox card. D David Morrell, yeah. David Morrell versus TBA. David Morrell versus TBA. Erickson Lubin versus Jason Rosario. Tank Davis versus Mario Barrios. And and Floyd Mayweather versus what you call? I like it. Boom! I like it. There we go. We in business. There we go. That's the card. That's the four fights. That's the well. Morrell might be on the under undercard. You know what I mean? So he couldn't be the fourth fight, but I like him. But I like him on that card. He was very, very man. He looked phenomenal. I don't know who that is, DB. Rolling, oh, it, it, oh, yeah, it gotta be a fucking, uh, damn, it gotta be a, a TMT fighter. It gotta be a TMT fighter. So, what TMT fighter? 
could be the fourth fighter. I, I forgot. I'm sorry. No, I got to be a TBT fighter. It got to be. Fondura is fighting May 1st, but he definitely can come back and fight June 26th. They've done it to him before. So it will be Roley. It will be Roley. Roley, Roley promotes a fight. Roley would be good. Roley versus TBA. Yeah, they fast tracking Morrell really fast, but uh, AB versus Floyd on Triller would do huge numbers. I mean, that would set, that would be just, I don't know if it would set records, but it, it would be, it would go do over a million pay per views. Oh, you made them up, DB? <laughs> Imagine if I would have said, yeah, I know him. <laughs> oh, man. Floyd and AB. Yeah, Roley Cuban American. There we go. Roley's the first fight. Roley versus TBA. Man, see, the barbershop is always two steps ahead, dog. Always two steps ahead, man. One night in Miami. There we go. That's it. Tank is training with him. You can't fight Floyd in June and expect people to support Tank June 26th. Ain't enough money in the month. How the hell you expect a, a family a family to spend two hundred dollars on pay per views in one month? Ain't happening. Ain't happening. Ain't happening. So, and Floyd is, I I think Floyd is committed to the fight. You know, so June twenty sixth, one night in Miami, one night in Miami. There we go. I love it. I love it. Love it. So and and there you have your trigger card. Y'all want to compete? There you go. Thank me later. Thank us later. Excuse me. I, I stand corrected. Thank us later. Because we did that shit. And, and, and I'm going to post that shit. That's a good question. Who was Devin Haney's trainer this camp? I have no idea. H Money, who's Devin Haney's trainer? I don't know. I know he's at Snack right now because I saw him on his, uh, I saw him hitting the punching bag with that mask on, that oxygen mask on. So he looks good though. He got abs and shit. What's today's date? Well, he's young. He's gonna he's gonna have them abs until he's about 34. But uh it's the 20th, it's the week of the 20th. So he got abs five, five weeks out. He good. You know, what I mean, he's probably like 151 right now, 152, somewhere in there. Um, but um, but yeah, he's five weeks out. He looks good. Um I want I want Devin Haney to do well, man. I really want Devin to do well. You know, what I mean, the, I mean, I mean, you just root for kids, man. You just he's a kid to me. I'm sorry, Devin is a kid to me. I remember Devin when he was I I didn't know him then, but you know, on Hustle Boss and Dante's Boxing Nation, he was a little kid, man. You know, so I, I still view him as that little kid. So, um, you just want him to be successful, man. You know. He's he's respectful, speaks well, you know what I mean? Does all the right things, does good in the community, you know? You, you just want a kid like that to do well, you know? You just really want, you know? So, um, so yeah, man. So, ho hopefully he looks good against Linares. I honestly, right now, hopefully he styles and profiles against Lenaris. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, Lenaris runs out of gas and his age catches up with him, and Haney can have his way. You know, Haney can have his way. You know, so, um, but I do believe Haney's gonna get hit. I I, I believe in the first four rounds, L Lenaris is gonna hit Devin Haney with the one-two. I I I think. Um, so, um, I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, it, I, I think it's going to be the first third of the fight. I think it's going to be a track meet. Maybe, you know, Devin's probably going to try and slow him down. You know what I mean? We're controlling the jab and all that, but I think Lenares is going to go and try and make it a track meet fight early on. And, and, and then I think Devin should, should control him. You know what I mean? I'm hoping that. I'm hoping that. What's up, man? What's up, man? What's going on, big friend? How you feel? How you feel, man? Oh, man, it's all good. It's all good. 
Uh, so my homeboy TJ uh, is training with him uh, for this training camp. He's uh, one of his sparring partners. So I just hit him right now uh, to see if uh, he can hop on. So I just hit him to see if he can hop on real quick. So uh, we'll see. But I just hit him, though. So I know you had some questions about Devin Haney. And he in, a, he in his training camp, so. That's dope. Uh, what's his weight? Yeah, he at 130. He fights yeah. at Mm-hmm. And Oakland right now. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm, I, that's I know. I need to. He he got like one more week out here, but some try to figure some shit out, Fred. Yeah, you should, go, you should go say what's up to him, Fred. You know what I mean? You know, I gotta. I can't. I, you know what I mean? I gotta. I gotta use uh, my back privilege. So I need you to go ahead and hand, hand, handle that for me. <laughs> I do. You got the fighter, huh? You got the fighter, and I'll back you up on it. So it's, it's different, man, when it comes from you, Fred. It's okay, different. okay. I got you. Uh, let me know when you want to go. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, because it, it's like, you know, because. Don't worry about it. I got you. Don't yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. It's done. Just let me know when you want to go, and I'll I'll, go, I'll I'll make the call for you. All right. My, my man, my man. Yeah, man. What's going on, Fred, man? How's your mental health, man? Everything good? Yeah, everything good, man. I had a good day today, man. I had a really good day today. Did you have a great day today? I had a, I had a great I had a great beautiful. Day. beautiful. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get fired, so any day I don't get fired is a good day. <laughs> right, right, right. Man, I, I remember I remember going to work some days and they're like I know I'm getting fired today. Not from teaching, but like you know when I was working uh like when I was working those summer jobs cuz I only job I ever had was a school teacher outside of like my summer jobs and stuff. Yeah. And um I remember knowing I was getting fired that day. It didn't happen. Yeah, man. I got a campaign going on, man. It's called DG, uh, DGF, man. Don't get fired, man. So I'll be. <laughs> Appreciate you, DB. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't get fired. I remember. I should have robbed Crown Bookstore, man. I should have <laughs> <laughs> robbed the motherfuckers, man. Not rob them, like take the money, but I should have took product, man. I, I'm not going in a register. I'm I'm not doing that. I'm I'm too corny to do that. But I should have because that I worked the summer when that OJ book was real popular. What was it called? Oh, you're too young. Uh no, no, that's the book OJ did. But it was another book. I'm sorry, I I, I thought that shit out loud. I didn't mean to say it. I didn't mean to say that, but it just came out. But Outmass. W- what was that? No, not, no, that was OJ's book. It was the book about the trial. Man, we couldn't keep enough copies to save our lives. What was that book called? It was a black cover. I should no, not I should have. That was OJ's book. Oh man, it was one word. But anyways, somebody Google it and tell me what what it was called. And uh, uh, no, it was like in 1996 that book came out. Because it was the summer that I worked, 1996. I was at Crown Bookstore on Wilshire. But go ahead. I should have robbed him, though. I should have stole all that shit. But continue. Dude, I I worked at a uh, I worked at a uh, amusement park. If anybody from North Carolina, y'all know this amusement park is called Carowinds, right? So they they uh, accused me of stealing, right? Mm-hmm. And I wasn't stealing. So my cousin was like, "Man, you might as well prove him right." I said. You know what? I'm gonna prove these niggas right, man. I started stealing all the money, nigga. Every time, cause you gotta do this like this little dinger. You don't just hand me the money. I throw it in my sock or something. Won't even, won't even hit the ding. And you know what I'm saying? I was tearing their ass up. What we were selling the, uh, you know, how, like the prizes. We were selling them hundred fifty, two hundred. I mean, these these dudes would do whatever for them prizes for these women, man. And we was tearing their ass up, boy. Eventually, I got fired, but. You know what I'm saying? Don't accuse me of stealing. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm going to start stealing from you. You know what I'm saying? I was going to up it up, man. You know what I'm saying? I was just good at the job. You know what I mean? I was a talker. So then they was like, oh, man, they, they, they kept trying to accuse me of stealing. So, shit. I started I started really stealing. And I should have I should have been stealing. Shit. My cousin, he came in stealing. He, he came in stealing from the jump. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He came in. As soon as he got in, he started stealing. Then I started stealing like some months after. I should have been stealing before. He started after me. I should have been stealing from the beginning, man. 
I could have made a killing. That would have been. I I made a killing, but I'd have made a killing that summer. Mm. Shit, if I was smart with my money, boy, I would have. I would have saved some. Yeah. But you know, Jordans and and uh, Jabos and Dickies back in them days, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the Dickies, man. Back in them good old days, man. That's a life. Bye, right, Big Fred. No long goodbyes. Hey, Mike Worry, see? Fast, it's quick. See what I'm saying? Niggas get on me in the chat, so I'm trying to trying to stop the time. All right, all right, nigga. See? Peace. Hey, and let me tell y'all another thing too about when I worked at the Super Crown bookstore. It's not there any longer. I wonder what it is now. But um, so when you pay with cash, right? Because credit cards wasn't big, wasn't as big as they were now, right? So, so a lot of people still pay with cash. And what happens is people say, keep the change, right? So if, so if a book comes to $24.97, they say, keep the change. They don't want the three pennies, right? And imagine if 20 customers did that, right? Because they just buy the book and they just walk out, right? Don't you know I get reprimanded on the, on the register being over? If the register was over like 40, 50 cents, they would get mad at me. They would get mad at me like, oh, you didn't pay the customers. You ripped the customer off. I'm like, they didn't want the change. What do you? So I I remember going in the back room, man, going in the back room, doing the register and shit. Damn, man. Yeah, man. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. What I hated about that job was stocking those damn books, man. God damn. Man, because you got to know how they order the books and shit. Like E, E, I, E, I, L, you know, horror, drama, you know, what's up, Drew? You know what I mean? So it's just, cheesh, you know, so, man. But I tell you how no, I I I tell you what I did do. And and uh, I personally don't give a fuck about this. But in college, in college, we um uh, we uh um uh, uh that's how we made money. Uh we used to steal books and and re- <laughs> oh my god. So I went to Woody at college, right? The bookstore is probably as big as your living room. I ain't going to even lie. Just go to your living room. That's how pretty much how big, about two of your living rooms, right? That's about as big as the bookstore is at Woody at college, right? It ain't like UCLA where it's like big as a motherfucking hallway, shit like that. Nah, 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 nah. So what we would do is stuff the books. We would wear a sweater like this, right? We wear a sweater like this and stuff the books in our front and our back. And we would uh, put cards in the books, whatever we could put in the book, like cards and uh, like whatever, five and ten dollars because they had a return. It's all I don't care what they going to do now. They had a return policy. So AR free. They had a return policy on the books. So if the book cost $100, we would get $60 back. And I remember the white lady at the bookstore caught on to it. She caught on to it. And I remember her um, I remember her coming out of her office trying to catch us and shit. Man, I would and and the books you had to get were the biology and psychology books. Those were their expensive. Those were their expensive books. The UCA library is one block long. I, I I bet it is. You know what I mean? Everybody's snitching tonight. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So, yeah, the white lady knew for sure. Oh, I, oh yeah, for sure. Matter of fact, I next time I go on my campus, I'm going to do a video. I'm going to do a video. Man, I used to, I used to clean clock in that motherfucker, dog. Man. I used to make five, six hundred dollars back then. That was like a, a gazillion dollars. You know what I mean? Because you because you start 
early on, like like second semester, middle of second semester, or middle of a semester, you start stealing the books, and then you have this buyback, and then they do the buyback program, and they give you like fifty percent of the book, and they didn't, and then they in turn resell it to the incoming class and shit. So that's pretty much what they did. So, man, make a killing off of that shit. Yeah, that shit was good though. Just the good old days, man. The good old days. Sneaking in the CI from the side door and shit because you didn't have a meal plan. All that good stuff, man. All that good stuff. You know what I mean? All that good stuff. Man. Man. And you can get away with it because you're because you're a freshman in college, sophomore in college. They're not going to expel you for stealing a book when they're making $40,000 off of you a year. Come on, do the math. What they going to do? What they going to do? Oh, well, he stole a hundred dollar book, but the government has given us thirty thousand dollars to keep this guy here. <laughs> they not thinking about it. I mean, you don't know that then. But when you become a grown person like me, they're not kicking you out of school for stealing the book. They're going to reprimand you, you know, so. But um, but but that's pretty much it, man. It was it was good times, though, man. Yeah, I steal everything, man, man. But I never stole from a person. No, I I can't recall me stealing from a person. You know, so. I mean, I might have stolen a pencil, you know what I mean? Or some shit like that. I might have stolen a CD from a person and then gave it back. You know, but I I can't recall me ever stealing from a person. So. Nothing substantial, I would say. Some small shit I probably did. But, man. The good old days, man. What are your college, man? I was a book bandit. <laughs> I was a book bandit. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That's the good times, man. So somebody call in, man. Say what's up. We ain't talking about shit. But but I do think that um, the fighters need to fight now. And I do believe Logan Paul. <laughs> Logan Paul is going to be a tougher opponent. Then that kid for uh for uh you got takers, then you got the <laughs> I think uh I do think Logan Paul is a more compelling opponent than that Montreal kid. No one knows who he is. I don't even know. The, the dude got the dude got a thousand followers on Instagram. And Jamal said, nobody knows who he is. We don't know who he is either. He don't speak English and got a thousand followers. Come on, man. You got to make this shit make sense, man. You know. And Mel is having a good time with this. Mel is is sneak dissing his brother left and right. You know what I mean? Ooh, he sneak dissing the fuck out of him. You know, so. The difference between taking and stealing. <laughs> Call it what you want, man. I never got caught, though. Never got caught. Until I went to motherfucking Super Kmart. Oh, man. I, I just said that story about 10 million times. My two days in jail. Motherfucking African, man. That fucking African, man. African, the loss prevention, off, the loss prevention officer at Super Kmart. Fucking African. That motherfucker, man. Man, I was so mad at this dude. I'm like, this is... Man, I ain't still over $500 worth of shit, man. Give me my ticket. No, no, you going to jail. You going to jail. I'm like, man, they arrested me and shit. They arrested me. Man, I had to walk. I had to walk through the damn thing. That shit was embarrassing like a motherfucker, man. And this is what it feels like. What's up, man? What's up? What's going on, friend? How you feeling this evening, I'm man? Feel, you good? I, I, I feel like snitching on myself, man. That's how I feel, man. What's up? <laughs> hey, man, it's that these limitations that ran out, man. <laughs> uh, we hit, you know, being on a, even though I went to a small HBCU, man, being on scholarship, we would, we would get the books and then sell them to kids who didn't have, uh, who uh, probably had to use their sale grant or buy the books for their own money. I don't think so people we can make out what you're saying. We get the book and sell it to them. I mean, it was, it was very illegal. I think uh, Alabama got caught doing that like nine, ten years ago. Got put on probation. Uh-huh. Oh. 
But, you know, you had to do what you had to do, man. You know, it ain't like one of these big universities where they're giving us stuff. Mm-hmm. But anywho, that's my that's my story about, uh, about Rob. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, man, good weekend in MMA, Fred. Uh, you know, it's going to be a good weekend. Uh, this is going to be a great card, UFC 261. Got the champ, Kamara Usman, against uh, – he's rematching Jorge Masvidal from last summer. Um, I think this fight is going to go a lot like the first one, a, a dominant five-round decision. But just to speak on the rest of the card, man, I think there's like 15 fights on this card. 15? And I promise you, Fred, at least seven or eight of them are going to be knockouts. I'm watching. Just looking at, just looking at the matchups that's, that's going down, man. And uh, DB, I'm pretty sure, come on and chime in later. But uh, you'll have the fight of the night, man. I think it's the co-main event between uh, John Wei Lee. Uh, UFC strawweight champion, which is 115 pounds, against the number one contender, uh, Rose Number Thug, Rose Number Units. That's gonna be fight of the night, Fred. I promise you. Okay, I'm with it. I'm with um, it. those those two ladies can scrap, man. And uh, Zhang Wei Li was actually fight of the year last year. Her and uh, uh, Joanna Yonchechek and their five round uh, epic fight last year. And, um, if, uh, if anybody's listening and you haven't seen that fight, go back and look up Wei Lee versus Joanna. That was an amazing fight. And uh, this is her first fight back. This is also Rose's first fight back from her uh, split decision win against um, Jessica Andrade, who's actually fighting my favorite uh, female MMA fighter, uh, Valentina Bullet Shevchenko, the 125-pound uh, women's champion, the flyweight champion. Um Outside of Amanda Nunez, nobody beats this girl. I mean, I'm talking about Valentina. Outside of Amanda Nunez, nobody beats her. And arguably, she beat Amanda Nunez that second time they fought. So uh, I believe she'll dust off this girl pretty quick. Uh, Jessica Andrade is not, I mean, she's nothing to, she's nothing to sneeze at, man. I mean, she's a, she's a little powerhouse. Like, if you saw her, she's like, okay, yeah, you fight for a living. She's a five foot one. Uh, she's a five foot one stick of dynamite. So, I mean, it'll, it'll be an interesting fight for about three minutes. Then Valentina's going to connect with a head kick and uh, separate her from her country. Um, then uh, on the prelims, you've got this, uh, you got this guy. Uh, from, nigga, uh, you about to go through the all 15 fights, nigga. No, I ain't going to go through the all 15 God. fights, man. I ain't going to do what I ain't going to do. All right, all right, all right. Thank God. Right Thank God. I just, just want to get these fighters some love, man. We, we, we spend a lot of time. But you don't know their name, nigga. How you gonna give some love? You don't know their name. That uh, they got a fighter that's five one. Uh, 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 she, she from she from uh, yeah, she from uh, that country. Uh, yeah, that country. Yeah, she from uh, Brazil. Yeah, she from Brazil, something like that. You know. <laughs> I said that name. I know, I know, I know. I'm, I know. Sure you're watch the I'm watching it. I'm watching it. I'm watching it Saturday for sure. Yeah, man. I'm just, you know, I'm excited, man, when there's good fights coming on. Um, yeah, just try to call in and talk to you for a little I bit. I appreciate straight. you, man. Love it's you, all man. love. It's all love. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I like how we can go back and forth on this show. Everybody speaks their views and nobody really gets disrespectful. Fuck that side. And uh, have a good, uh, <laughs> Have a good night, Fred. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Cool. We got TB coming in. What's up, TB? What's up, TB? What's up? What's going on, man? How you feel, man? How you feel? I'm sorry, man. I was writing something down. I'm good, man. How you doing? Thank you for asking. I'm well. What you got? Um... I, I mean, with all the stuff that's going on, man, it was, it was, uh, it was like I, I've been like stuck in like a lot of meetings today and all that kind of stuff, man. And, and um, it was something that I just wanted to say to. to Have you ever of... stole something? Have you ever stole something before? <laughs> it's snitching night, dog. It's snitching. H money gonna take the whole show because that nigga done stole everything in his life. He's next, but you're not gonna believe me if I tell you. You stole a car. What, what kind of car was it? <laughs> Seven years old, I stole a 1983 or 84 Chevy Citation uh, with a cockeyed radio. And, and, and you hit a tree? I hit a tree. <laughs> um, 
I remember, I remember watching my dad drive, you know what I'm saying? And he, you know, say he, he would turn the wheel uh, and he'd let it go, uh -huh. and then they come back. Oh my god, and he catch it uh -huh. and he go straight. I turned the wheel, let it go, and it ain't come back. <laughs> and boom, right into the tree. Oh man. So yeah, I was uh I was seven, I was seven years old. Uh -huh. I was two, I was like two or three months shy of being the legal age to go to juvenile detention. Mm. I went home and got uh when my mom found that out, she started salivating. I got the beating of my life. Call me uh, call me Toby. I got the beating of my life. I had never been in trouble since. <laughs> she she beat me into wanting to be a cop. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah man uh Nah, never again. Not after that. But um, <laughs> what's up, man? I, 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 um, yeah, man. With, with all the stuff going on, man, you got a lot of people talking about activism and stuff now. You know, I want people to know, man. Activism don't stop. If you start something, and you say, "Well, I'm going to get this done," and whatever, I'm telling you right now, you're not going to live long enough. You're going to always have to pass the torch because I don't care. You know, so if you say, well, I'm going to put a stop to police brutality. I'm going to put a stop to racism. I'm going to put a stop to this and the other. These these things take longer to 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 uh, to do than you have time. We've been doing this for going. We say 400 years, but it's been longer than 400 years. Black folk are pushing on a thousand. If you want to talk about. We'll go, what's what's the went on here in the United States? And you want to come and you want to take that and you want to uh, when you take that, you're going you're gonna to need to add on the the Muslim aspect, the Muslim slave uh, uh, enslavement of Africans, which was on a grander scale than what we did with over here. So if you be realistic, you don't have enough time. So the best thing you can do if you're going to do it is to know that you're going to pass it on and don't try to take ownership of it and say, well, this is my territory. This is my lane because it's not because you have to give it up because you don't have enough time. You know, so um, and and I I'll be honest with you, I came to that realization here recently because I'm looking at the things that I'm doing. And I'm like, can the rules that you don't have enough time? I don't have enough time. I'll be 46 next week. It's going to take me more time than what God's going to give me less uh, left in order to do what I think is the end goal. Because you have opposition. Things that you want to do, there's people that don't want to see it done. And it's going to always be that way. Until, until, until the people who want to see it done become the real uh, majority. I mean, the real majority. Not the phantom. Right, right now we have, the, we have a phantom majority. I mean, when we come to a, a, a particular place where we are actually really enlightened, which we are not. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I'm turning this popcorn up, man. I quit smoking. So, I'm, I mean, popcorn my thing. Oh, you, congratulations. How long have you been smoking? How long you quit? Go to the second week. Because you realize you ain't got that much time. My man. And Chantix. It should it must work good. So, um, yeah, man, and uh, this uh, just so everybody knows, man, this mural thing, man, I'm I'm pushing the date back to September, the Labor Day weekend, unveil uh, September fourth. Uh, had a snag with some paperwork, building permits, and um, and on top of that, the donations are coming in slow. Uh, I'll be straight up. I have a fifty thousand dollar goal. We've Gotten about twenty one hundred dollars when it uh, on a what's going to be a world famous mural. The, the very second donation that we had got was from the UK, so they know about this in UK. We got donations from Nigeria, South Africa. This is a it's already world known. It's not even up, but it's, it's nickel and dime. So we need people to actually. You know, as people listen to this, listening to this right now, they can make an impact, and that, and then and then be here 
when it happens to know that, you know, to see that this, this is going to be a worldwide thing. Why don't you make a 30 second commercial? In the process of doing that, because I'm not actually, well, actually what I'm about to do is I'm starting to uh, employ the kids from uh, the Building African American Minds organization. Uh, my, uh, a friend of mine is the CEO of that. And we're going to start inc incorporating those kids into the whole process. And we're going to do a videography. And uh, so we're going to we're, we're going to do that. And um, I got yes, I got the governor's office. I got white. I got people from the White House that's involved or whatever. But this right here is 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 a thing where us us folk uh, us skin folk, as a uh, uh, Sergeant Dorsey would say, us skin folk need to be getting involved because I've had I've had I've already had one billionaire white Jewish guy try to convince me that this mural should not go in a black community. I should put it down there by one of his businesses and he's willing to pay me, <clears throat> excuse me, not pay me, but donate uh, X amount of dollars into this thing in order to convince me that this mural needs to go down by his restaurants and hotels, which is not fit to happen. He I mean, I mean, uh, would ask me, well, how much money would it take for you to uh, agree with this guy? I said, um, he, they say he's a billionaire. He ain't got enough money. That's why I told him he ain't got enough money. The mural's not the mural stand in the black community. So um, yeah, man. So all these all you brothers talked about, well, you know, I want to get into this, man. I want to I'm telling you, you don't have enough time to complete the work. So if you're gonna complete, if, if you're gonna get into the work, then it's, then, then the best mind, mind frame you can have is to be inclusive in doing the work. And being and being transparent because and then knowing at one point you have to pass the torch because uh, the thing you should be worried about is getting the movement started and then again the momentum and basically at that point your job is done because you're not going to see it because you're not going to see it to the end because you don't have enough time you'd have to have a lifespan of over 500 years. That's all I got, Fred. You gonna drop the link and all that? Gotcha. Peace. All right, man. All right. All right. What did we learn from that phone call? We don't have what enough time. H money, you got your list ready? <laughs> this nigga, what what haven't this nigga stolen? What haven't you stolen, nigga? Yo, what's up with it? What's good? <laughs> hey, Fred, man. Hey, y'all having fun, man. Your rap, hey, your man. rap name is Sticky Fingers, nigga. Gotta be. Gotta be nah, your rap. You know, nah, never, never. Hey, Fred, look. Hey, man, guess what? This oh. right here is a it's a great week right here, man. You know what I mean? It's fight week. I'm talking about Charles Lolo Harris. 17-year-old boxing phenom, the LeBron James of boxing. This kid is special. This kid straight out of high school to the pros, man. I mean, like Kobe Bryant and them. I mean, this kid has greatness written all over him. He's fast. He can punch. He got power. Lolo be knocking people out. Knock them out cold. You feel me? This kid is fast, strong, athletic. He got the defense. He got the IQ. He was the number one amateur at 132 pounds. Now, Lolo fight this Saturday. He's ready to take over. He's ready to take over. And, and Fred, I got breaking news. We uh -huh. working on a deal. We working on a deal. Lolo, he's about to he's about to get signed. Lolo is about to get signed, ladies and gentlemen. This is amazing. In the barbershop, we did it as a community. DB, Reggie Owens, Pat Patricia Shelton. You know what I'm saying? Patty Dean. You know what I mean? Fred, we did it. Lolo, he's closing in. They come in with a nice offer. You know what I mean? This is special. A kid out the hood from the inner city. You know, boxing. Boxing changed his life. You know, how many how many people none, none died? You know what I'm saying? We in the pandemic. The coronavirus. So many, so many people died. But at the end of the day, pressure, pressure makes diamonds. Pressure makes diamonds. And out this pandemic, Lolo has emerged as the number one prospect in boxing. The number one prospect in boxing. I'm talking about greatness, man. And tomorrow, 
I'm telling you the weigh-in. You don't want to miss the weigh-in. You don't want to miss the fight. It's going to be on Facebook or we could put it on Fred channel. What about we could put it on Fred channel? I'm telling you, Lolo did numbers, 100,000 views when he beat, he beat up Tank Davis. He beat up Tank Davis in front of Mayweather at 16 years old. 16 years old, he did that. Who doing it like him? Who doing it like Lolo? For real. You better know it. All you Tank Davis fanboys out there, Lolo beat up Tank. Who, where Batman at? He beat up Gary Russell right now. Right now, he beat up Gary Russell. Real talk. Real talk, man. For real. And that's why, how I'm coming, man. For real. For Hey, Fred, I appreciate it, man. We did it. You know what I'm saying? Lolo got a deal. Tell him right now. You know what I'm saying? He got a deal, baby. We in there. We in there. Let's go. For real. For real. Nobody does it better. Hey, that nigga's a career criminal. Hey, you know how when you're, hey, when you holler at your uncles and shit and y'all playing and shit and, and they give you that, I will kill you nigga laugh. <laughs> That was that's it. Tell us what you stole. <laughs> you funny nigga. You funny nigga. That nigga answered that question like like he was pinky. Nigga, like he was the light skinned pinky and shit. <laughs> Didn't I tell your ass to come out after eight? Uh, what did he tell that salesman? The car. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, we needed a night like this, man. Past two nights been heart wrenching. Kimbo Fred, yeah, I'm about to. I got like 20 more days with this, man, and it's over. It's gone. The quarantine beard will be gone. You know what I mean? <clears throat> you know what I mean? So, yeah. <clears throat> oh man, they uh. <laughs> Come on, man. What y'all steal, man? Somebody call in and tell me what you stole. What you steal, nigga? <laughs> hey, I'm sure, I'm sure, like, they can't bring up charges on me from, like, 1996 for stealing a book, can they? I'm sure they can't. Oh, hey, I got to tell you this funny-ass story. So, so I used to go to Brer at night uh, when I got my car and shit. They had a Krispy Kremes on Beach and Imperial. For those of you that live in that area, there may be one or two of y'all. And um, across the street was, guess what? A Super Kmart. And I remember, I remember, dog. I went to go steal some CDs and shit, right? <laughs> I went to go steal some CDs. And... Um, it was late at night and shit because I would get away with it. And I remember one night they saw me on the camera that I was stealing. And they was like, please go to aisle five. And I look up. I'm on aisle five. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, please go to aisle six. I'm on aisle six. So I just politely put that shit back on the shelf and walked out the store. Man, that shit was funny, man. Damn, the things you did, man, to survive, man. Hey, survival is the mother of necessities, dog. Man, the things I did to survive. Wow. Y'all taking me back down memory lane tonight, dog. I wonder how many fat girls I smash to pay my rent. <laughs> hey, 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 I remember. I remember. Um, what year was that? My boy Kurt, my boy Kurt, right? Because, because <laughs> hey, nigga, you had to, you had to do any by any means necessary, dog. Complete left her. Yeah, this shit done went to hell, right? So, I remember I had a girl paying my rent, right? And my boy, Kurt, he was the center of my basketball team, right? My rent was $333, by the way, $333. And we had a two-bedroom apartment. It was three dudes, and I had my own room, coincidentally. And uh, it was me, David Hinojosa, 
Curtis Bonner, man, my nigga, Curtis Bonner. He's in my accountability team, right? And uh, I had this white girl named, I can't say her last name, but her name was Jennifer. Jennifer, right? How many of y'all done fucked the Jennifer? Raise your hand if you done fucked the Jennifer, right? <laughs> so she would pay my rent every month, right? And uh, uh, motherfucker, <laughs> Kurt called me Free Me Freddy. <laughs> Oh my god! I should call Kurt right now, but it, it wouldn't be as good. The story wouldn't be as good now because I'm sure he's he's with the family now. But oh, hey, you know what? Y'all met one of them one time. It, 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 if you go through my old videos, you'll see my boy George. He came to the gym one time to the Sean Porter's gym, and we talked about it. But Labor Day, Labor Day, Labor Day. We may get together this Labor Day. Before quarantine, we would get together on Labor Day. Like six of us. I I I host like something at my house for one day, two days, you know. So maybe September we'll get together. Oh, I'm gonna record everything. Oh my God. Because we tell the same stories every year. You know, like those stories don't change. Like <laughs> anyways, man. I know everybody done fuck the white Jennifer dog. Raise your hand, you know. Tell Hey, hey, what Kanye say? Let's have a toast. Let's have a toast. <laughs> oh, my God. Shout out to the white Jennifers in the world, man. How many niggas these white Jennifers didn't say? <laughs> oh, my God. I had to be 19 or 20, dog. I had to be one of those years, man. I think that's the last white girl I ever slept with. I think so. 1920. I don't know. I can't remember. You know what I mean? But damn. Yeah. Jennifer is out there doing God's work, right? Hey, when you go to these white colleges, man, it's a ham. Hey, hey, you know what they got? <laughs> hey, Jennifer 33X. <laughs> Jennifer 67X. Oh, man. Anyways, I was trying to make DB laugh. <laughs> Oh my God, man. Oh my God, man. Damn, dog. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Kelly Swanson. Nah, I didn't. Nah, hell, nah. But I know everybody got a Jennifer and had a Jennifer in their life. So, oh, man. Man. What a time, dog. What a time. What up, Pac Man? What's up, big homie? Yeah, man. Damn. If if I could remember these stories, I'll tell you, I ain't got no shame. Shit. I had to survive. I had to fucking survive my ass off. Mm. I do I do remember smashing this white girl that went to UCLA. I had a boy named Alton. I'm not gonna say his last name. I had a boy named Alton. We used to go over to Cameron Dollar and Charles o Charles O'Bannon and Cameron Dollar were roommates in college. And we used to go play Madden with them, right? Because Alton was friends with them. I wasn't friends with them yet. But Charlie O and Cameron, those were UCLA basketball players. Charles O'Bannon was the number one recruit like in 1993, 94, somewhere in there. He was a highly touted kid. No, later than that. His brother, Ed O'Bannon. But I, I, I didn't meet Ed O'Bannon. And so um, she had to be at least. I mean, she was a big girl, man. I don't even know her name. What's her name, dog? This had to be 96, 97. Some big girl at UCLA. I don't know. Probably Lindsay or Megan. <laughs> yeah, probably Lindsay or Megan. Dog. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Man. Yep. Yep. On Sunday, we used to go. I remember that shit. We used to go. For, I, I, I forgot I used to play Madden with Cameron Dollar and Charles O'Bannon. I remember them days. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, they legends, right? Charles and Ed. Yeah. Amanda and Katie. <laughs> oh man. That that was the 90s, dog. The 90s. Wow. Yeah, man. That was fun. All right. Now we're back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. 
they stayed across the street from Lakewood High, though. Band. Oh, did they? Oh, that's interesting. I didn't I, I didn't know where they live, but uh, I heard some great stories about Ed O'Bannon, like how great of a basketball player he was. Charles O'Bannon ended up going to Fresno State, right? No, no, he graduated from UCLA, right? He was a good basketball player. just wasn't great, but he was really good at everything. Cameron Dollar won a national championship, right? Uh, didn't uh, what's called got hurt, right? Tyus Edney got hurt, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I remember Cameron Dollar, the backup point guard. That was 94, 94, 95. Yeah, that was 95. Tyus Edney against Missouri. Google that shit. That nigga went coast to coast against Missouri. I was in camp. I was in basketball camp with Paul Pierce. Who would y'all know? Because I remember us talking about it. Mike Dunleavy. Was that Mike Dunleavy? No, not Mike Dunleavy. It was a bunch of college coaches there. But, yeah, Paul Pierce was probably the most recognizable name that was in the camp with me that year. And, uh, yeah, and I remember we wasn't watching the game because we didn't have TVs on the floor, but somewhere at Cal State, was it Cal State? Dominguez, Cal State Dominguez, Cal State Dominguez. Uh, the coaches had TVs or something, and UCLA was playing Missouri, and Tyus said they went coast to coast on a Saturday or a Sunday. I'll never forget it. And every and the gym just erupted when UCLA beat Missouri on the last second shot by Tyus Edney. I remember that. Yeah. Paul Pierce went to Kansas. Hell of a basketball player. He played in slow motion, though. Like, he couldn't stop him, though. He was so fucking smooth and slow. Hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And I always joke with, always joke with, uh, 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 what's the other basketball player that went to Inglewood High School? I joke with him all the time. What's his name? Reggie Theus. I, I joke with Reggie Theus every. I, I only see him maybe once every two years now, and uh, and uh, but uh, once a year, maybe twice a year. And we always every conversation we have is who's better, him or Paul Pierce, because they both went to Inglewood High School. So it's pretty dope. <clears throat> Toby Bailey was a bad motherfucker, too. Toby Bailey was bad. Toby Bailey was a bad man. I played with his brother, Moose. I went to camp with Moose Bailey. Moose Bailey was pretty fucking good. He, he was a senior my senior year, too. He went to... Uh, um, he went to that Catholic school on, on Venice in Normandy. Loyola. He went to Loyola. Yeah, he was he was good. He ended up going to UCLA. He was a good backup player. He's a good backup player. Yeah, so anyway, we were talking about boxing, right? So yeah, man, I think I'm willing to bet. Who would you want to see? I, I, I'm I'm telling you, Jamal Charlo got an easier opponent than than Floyd. I'm telling you. Man, that guy ain't gonna do ain't got no resistance. Man, that man got a thousand followers on Instagram. Not that it's wrong, because I only got a handful of thousand, too. So I'm not saying, but the fact that he said he ain't fighting nobody. You know what I mean? Oh, the Cubs. Yeah, definitely the Cubs. Yeah, blue and white Cubs. Yep. Yeah. Big girls need love, too. Shit. I, I guess they did. So. I wonder how they tell that story 30 years from now. 30 years. I wonder how they tell. I wonder how the girls tell those stories. Yeah, I fucked this nigga. <laughs> the white girls when they around their girlfriend. I fucked that nigga. Yeah. Yeah, I put it on them. Yeah. I, I wonder how they tell how they tell that story. How she gonna tell that story? How Kelsey gonna tell that story about little Freddie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh man, I'm a bad man too, friend. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, little Freddie. That's what my teammates call me. You know, they always bigger than me, little Freddie. Yeah, so. Oh, they don't tell the story. <laughs> I wasn't that memorable anyway to them niggas. It ain't like I was. Ain't like I cared about them anyway, right? At what age? Fuck, man. Fuck it. Let's go. At what age do you become like a professional in the bedroom? What age? I'm talking to the men. Like, what age do you say I care about her? I'm going to get her off. Is is it an age or is it a number? Like, you have sex a hundred times or a thousand times, and then you become the expert. About 25, you say? 25? Oh, you think it's a number? You say 90. Oh, you think 90 times? 90 times? 22? Hell no. Nah, 22. Ah, I don't think. Me personally, I don't think I was consistently great at 22. I don't think I was consistently great at 22. I'm talking for me personally. Nigga, EJ said 16. Nigga, you. About 75 and up. So you think you had sex about 75 times and then you got it figured out? Really? 75 times? Mm. It's a mentality. It's just mental. Yeah, yes, that's right. It's a mentality. Okay, here's a better question. At what age should a man have it down? Have it down. I, I think that's the better question. At what age should a man be like, I know how to please a woman? Thirty? Thirty for sure. Thirty for sure. You, you gotta be at thirty for sure. I think twenty one, really? I don't think I was pleasing consistent con consistently pleasing women at twenty one. I don't think so at twenty one. Um 28, mid 20s for sure. Mid 20s, I would 23, 24, Tay. I don't think I was there at 23, 24. I don't think I was like in the. Who? 27 for me. I would say like 26, 27 for me, where I was like, I knew what the fuck I was doing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like I knew how to make her move the way she wanted to move where I would allow her the freedom of her, you know? Yeah. 20. Yeah. 25 to 28 is a good range. Yeah. Yeah. But every woman is different. Yeah. But I would say for me, 25 to 28 is fair, but definitely not 25 for me. I would lean more towards 26 to 28 where I'm like in my, in my zone where like, you know what I mean? Where I know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, like a hundred out of a hundred times, I'm going to get you. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think 26 to 28 for me, for sure. It, it, and it all depends on your partner, too. But 26 to 28 for me, I think I was, I was good. 22, I was like, shit, I'm about to get. I think 22, it was more about, I'm about to fuck you four times. You, you know what I mean? Like, like, I'm about to give you this this D four times a night. You know what I mean? I think, well, I'm going to speak for me. I think when I was in my early 20s, I think it was like, if I fucked you four times in one night, I was better. I, I did a great job. You know, so. As it was for me. You know, so. And, 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 and then that mentality shrinks and stuff. And then you... You grow into your manhood phase. 26 to 28 for me. Somewhere in there. I got it. It just it just clicked in for me. I got it. Mm -hmm. If you want you do every trick in the book. I think women give you answers to the test if you listen to them. If you listen to their body, 
they'll give you the answers that to, uh, to every question you have. <laughs> I'm about to get this trash thing. Yeah. Uh, man, I don't I don't think I knew what I was doing at 22. You know what I mean? You watch pornos and you know what I mean? I think it's about how many times made me a pro. Really? Okay, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's definitely fair. Salute DB and Fred. The potatoes are gonna take are gonna take and the haters are gonna hate. <laughs> I feel great. You dig uh you on your pimp player ball shit, huh? <laughs> What's up, Dre? How you feel, man? How the DMV treating you, big homie? I had some sunshine that made me cry. Then I know I had to come correct every time. Oh, did you? Did you? Yeah. 26 to 28 for me. I- I'm in that range. I'm in that range. I-, I lost my virginity at. I was that horse man when I lost my virginity. I remember it like I remember it like it was yesterday, but I, I lost my virginity. I was that horse man. And then I went to Mount Carmel Park. I went straight to Mount Carmel Park. I ha- <laughs> I know this story like the back of my hand, dog. Like the back of my... I know her name and everything. As you should, right? LaShonda was her name. LaShonda. How you doing? I wonder how LaShonda... I, I, damn, LaShonda. How you been? LaShonda. Damn. I'm not going to tell you how it happened, but LaShonda. Yeah, LaShonda. That was her name. I was in the seventh grade, though. Uh, I don't know how old I was, seventh grade. That makes me 12 or 13, somewhere in there. 18. But I didn't really, really start fucking until, like, my senior year in high school, though. Junior year sometimes, senior year, I was fucking a little bit. But I didn't have a lot, a lot of women. And then I got to college and fuck. Man. Damn. It was a whole nother thing when I got to college. You know, you got a lot of time on your hands. I was in the seventh grade. Never forget it. LaShonda, man. LaShonda. I wonder how LaShonda doing. I wish I knew her last name. Because I don't even think she knew I was a virgin. Oh, I know how I can find it. I'm a, uh, maybe I can look through the yearbook. I can go through the, the um, I can go to the, because uh, I have a property right across the street from Horace Mann. So when they open up, I'm going to go into the library. I'm going to go into the library and see if I can find her on Instagram. That'd be funny. I'm going to tell her. I don't think she knows. I lost my virginity that day. I only think she knows. Yeah. Oh, man. Salute to your dad, big homie. Yeah. You don't want to find. But I just want to tell her that was, I don't think she knows I was a virgin because I didn't tell her. I didn't tell her I was a virgin. Didn't tell her at all. My first ugly girl. Hmm. Probably at Venice. I don't remember who it was. I remember my, I remember an, I remember an, oh man. I remember I had this, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I remember an ugly one I had. It's, it's it's a crazy story behind it. So, anyways, and DB call in, man. I need a I, I, no one calling in. DB call in, but I I'll, I'll tell you guys the story about the ugly chick. I was a. It was my second year of college, but I was still considered a freshman because I transferred to Woodier College. And I don't know her name though. The fuck is her name? I don't remember her name. I got to remember her name. Fuck is her name. 
I don't know her name. She went to the military because I saw her on Facebook about 10 to 15 years ago. I don't know when. But um, <laughs> he left and unsubscribe. Nah, what's her name, dog? Dog, I know her name. But anyways, let me tell you the story behind it. DB, call in. So, I'll tell you guys a story that's going to be hilarious, though. Hilarious. I'm going to tell you guys a funny-ass story. So, anyways, man. What's up, Kev? I appreciate you, man. Thank you. We going back. Yeah, she'll remember my name because she was, like, in love with me. She was, like, in love with me for sure, for sure. I was that nigga at Woody College, though. Like, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. Like, I was really that nigga. All, all my classmates to tell you, Fred was that nigga. Uh, I had a mouthpiece on me. Not that I was bigger or bad than anyone, but I just I just was a smooth, articulate nigga when I got to Woody College, man. But let me... Uh, I'm trying to... What's up, DB? How you feel, man? What up, what up, bro? How you feel? So I, I was telling the story about the first ugly girl that I can remember. So... Man. The first, the first ugly girl I remember vividly, and I'm gonna tell you why I remember her vividly. I had a had a I had a roommate named Steve Hodge. Steve Hodge was my dude. He was a white boy from Canada, and we were staying in Stoffer Hall. And I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna give you guys the whole story because I'm going down memory lane as I tell you guys the story. So bear with me. Y'all probably don't even care about some of these details. So I stayed on the lacrosse floor. At Whittier College, lacrosse was a big sport. Like, all these white boys come from the East Coast, and you know what I mean? So, anyways, uh, Steve Hodge, right? And I'm like, Steve, you got to leave. I'm about to smash this girl real quick. And uh, Steve is cool. He's from Canada. He, he He's a Canuck. You know what I mean? I called him a Canuck all the time. And he's from Vancouver. And so, and... I I end up smashing her, right? I end up smashing her. You was the only nigga in the school. No, I wasn't. <laughs> no, I, wasn't. I, I wasn't, but I because that's why I was a nigga. All right, yeah, nah. Steve Hodge and white girls, man. St- me and Steve Hodge had a blast, man. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I can't speak on him. But so I, I smash her, right? And it, it's it's like this walk of shame. Because I'm all the lacrosse players, they throwing the ball in the hallway and shit, and they hitting that shit, and she comes out because Steve is in the hallway, and I'm I'm Steve's first black black guy ever, period, like for real, for real. I'm just a he ain't never been around a black guy ever in his life, right? So he's down there like, oh yeah, Fred is Fred is fucking that girl and doing this and doing that. So when she comes out. Everyone's looking like, oh, yeah, Fred smashed her. But anyways, I'm going to tell you this story. And, and this is why it's so important. Women are so conniving. I learned this is when I learned about being black, being black. So the girl was black. I forget her name. But anyways, she had a Mexican roommate. She had a Mexican roommate. The Mexican roommate wanted me. So what happened was. Because we had to, we lived on the same hallway. We lived on a third floor together. On one side is the girls. On the other side is the boys, right? And because I had to, I'm not sneaking to her room, but you don't want nobody to know you're fucking, right? That, 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 that's that college shit. You don't want nobody to know you're fucking, right? So she would leave the door unlocked, right? And I would, and she would say, hey, come at 11 o'clock, Right? So I would be there at 11 o'clock every night, right? So, so, so at the end of the day, um, the Mexican chick, say it again. Oh, you said at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's 11.59. Oh, okay, thank you. 10.59, sorry. The Mexican chick calls the dean and says, I was sneaking in her room trying to fuck her. So you don't do you know how embarrassing it is? I don't know how embarrassing it is because I'm scared at this point. Like you you accuse me of trying to rape you. 
Me and the black girl had to go to Dave Leonard's office. Dave Leonard was the dean at Woody College. Dave Leonard's office. And, and the black girl had to go and tell this white dean that, no, Fred was coming to fuck me. How embarrassing is that? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, like, no, 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 not embarrassing for me, but how insulting it is because, oh, like, she tried to play me. You understand what I'm saying? Like, that was like my first nigga. Don't you know what could I would have got kicked out of school? Would have got cases, all that shit. But it, it wasn't. I know it's funny because because she was ugly, but it wasn't embarrassing. I know that's why you have me, but that's not. But it was the fact that I had to sit there, and I and this girl had to say, "No, nah, she's wrong." Like. He was he was there to see me, you know what I mean? So but but the girl, but the girl, the girl wanted me. She was kind of a middle sized Mexican girl, and I guess she wasn't getting no loving. And and, and you know, you making sounds and shit, because we didn't have bump beds, but they was on separate sides of the room and shit. So, you know, that's those, those twin beds. What's up? Those twin beds. Yeah, the twin beds. Yeah, the twin beds. But you have the option of bunking them. But they wasn't bunked in her room. Man. Yeah, I got so many college stories. Yeah, this is, you know, it's Ramadan, so it's the wrong, the wrong day and time for me to be talking about these escapades. Okay. Okay. So you have to revisit this conversation in a couple of weeks. But um yeah, man. Uh I don't I don't stole a few things, you know, uh in my time, you know, uh stole on a bunch of dudes, a bunch of marks. Um, yeah, I stole some time, you know, just, just small things here and there. I, I ain't took nothing big, you know, but, uh, I don't know. I got to think about that. Maybe, maybe I have, I just, I just forgot. I got to start running down a list of these names, but I do remember back in the day, it'd be, uh, I don't know, like say me and my bro or, yeah. <clears throat> Or a cousin or something, one of the homies, and it'd be like, say me and you, right? We go to go to kick it with some chicks, and you know, I'm smashing all of the time, doing my thing, but you know, I'm like, all right, this little Fred, if Fred ain't really getting no yak like that, so I'm gonna allow, I'm gonna allow him to do his business, you know what I'm saying? So we get over to go see two shorties, you know what I'm saying? And your shorty talking reckless to me, right? And I could just be like, come on, let's bounce, but. I know you ain't really getting yak like that, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tough it out. I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you get your I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the punishment so that you can get yours off. I know in the next 15 minutes you should be in the back room smashing, right? So I'm letting her talk reckless to me, whatever she whatever she want to say. Cool. So when she go in the room, I'm saying that we at her spot. Now I'm looking for something that's small but that look expensive. You know what I'm saying? Something on something on on the uh, on the mantle. Just anything, and not that I even want it or need it, but just because you're so reckless, you know what I mean. Uh, and it's probably because you want me really, and you don't really want Fred, but you're mad at me because, you know, because I got the friend. So yeah, once once little Freddie get in the room and start, you know, what I'm saying punching her gut, yeah, I'm finna I'm finna grab that little uh, that little piece that your dad got from from Greece or Italy or whatever it is. That's I'm funny take it as I'm... fuck. That's huh? that's funny because I got a story similar to that. Let me hear. Let me hear. So I don't mind telling the stories. So, anyways, uh, laws of statutes. Anyways, man, this is some college shit. So I'm not sure we got anybody that's familiar with Whittier. So, so they had something called QCs, and then they changed it to Peppers. It was on Philadelphia and um, whatever that. It's on Philadelphia and Greenleaf. Are you familiar with Woodier? No. Anyways, so yeah, 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 uh, uh, okay, so, so they had something called QCs, Peppers. It was something, but it was a big club. Yeah, I, re- I, re- I remember um, like hearing those names, and plus, um, I remember working in the area like a few years back, and people were talking about those clubs, right? Yeah, it's like a club. It, it was a it was a real popular spot. So, yeah. anyways, I'm with my boy Marvin Johnson. Some Marvin Johnson. This girl is feeling me. She's in the Air Force. I remember this vividly. She's in the Air Force. And she want she she, she want to give it away. I'm going to oblige. 
you know, a, a little Mexican girl, right? And um, we go in there. He's like, Fred, you got to smash her. I'm a robber. <laughs> I'm like, you got to smash, Fred. So so we go to her crib and shit. He smashed. And I don't know what he takes. I, I can't recall. But that was the first time I, I had ever been a part of something like that. Like, I ain't never did that before. And, uh, but you know, whatever the nigga say he's going to do is never nigga say he's going to do. So, so obviously I, I don't know how we split it up or something like that, but obviously we split it up and do something like that. So, uh, so, but, um, but yeah, so that's pretty much what it is, man. So, <laughs> uh, Kevin, I haven't said, <laughs> what do you say? He said, it sounds like train vibes. They just said, yeah, that's how these stories start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna revisit this. Like I say, revisit this in a couple of weeks, man. I, yeah, I got some, I got some crazy stories. My bro in the chat, yeah, he he could, he could vouch for all of it. You know, what I mean? yeah, some crazy, crazy times. Yeah, I got um, a bunch of stories. I mean, I, I mean, but everybody knew it. It's no secret. I mean, it was so bad. I mean, I was so reckless. I was so beyond my years that. I remember girls would come up to me and be like, man, I just want to have sex with you. No lie. Like, I don't know how special I was. Everybody at Woodier will tell you, no lie. You can just pick anybody, random Woodier from 96 to 2000. Fred. Oh, Fred fucked all the bitches. Like, it was just, I don't know. I don't know what, what I had. Maybe it was because I was a midget. I don't know. But I don't know. Maybe I don't know what it was. But everybody knew it was no secret. Nah, it wasn't a secret at all. Mm -mm. My all bro up. said from midget to giant. Hey, yeah. bro, you remember the, the remember the midget? What was the little midget? I can't remember the little midget name. <laughs> I remember my bro had this little midget came through. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never smashed a midget. I ain't never smashed a midget. No midget. I can't remember the midget. Yeah. That little thick midget. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! I'll tell you a funny ass story. I'll tell you a funny ass story. So, I'm I'm going down memory lane right now. So I haven't thought of this shit in 20 years, dog. So so y'all got it. So I'm just having a good time right now. So, anyways. It was a Mexican club. This is the swear to God truest story. Anyways, I ain't got no reason to lie to y'all niggas. So I'm at a club on Rosemead, and it, it was in Pico Rivera, whatever it was. See, I smashed a lot of Latin women because Whittier is predominantly Latino neighborhood, right? So when I went off campus, when I was on campus, everybody got it, right? So, but it was, it was a club, right? And this lady knew no English. This is the truest story ever. I swear before God, God is my witness. I had a blue Omega. I had a blue 1980 something Oldsmobile Omega. I swear before God. And so I go to this club, right? I'm probably with somebody. I, I can't recall who I'm with. And she's a, a, a waitress. And I don't know what I'm saying to this girl, but now she want to give me the pussy. No lie. She was older than me too. She was older. I had a fake ID. I had a fake ID from Texas, as I told y'all. So um, um, we get to my dorm room. This is the God, the honest truth, dog. It's like 2.30 in the morning. We leave the club, right? And she needs a ride. She, I guess she didn't have a car. So we go to my room, and we're about to smash, right? I swear before God. You know what she says? No, 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 no. It stink. No, 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 no. It stink. <laughs> she said, "You can't have this. It stink." No, no, no. Like, 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 like. She gave me like the motion and shit. Like, no, no, no. It stink. No, no, no. no so. <laughs> Swear to God. Swear to God. Swear to God. Swear to God. Uh, yeah, well, say no. Yeah, baby girl, say no more. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, 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 and uh, Keila McBride, welcome to the welcome show. Welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome to, to the, the show. show. Hit that subscribe button. I swear, before it got, I ain't never had to happen to me before. And it was like, and I'm 19 years old, man. So I don't know nothing. Like, 
you know, I, I'm fresh on freedom because I went to Cal Baptist. We didn't have weekends like this at Cal Baptist. You know what I mean? Like we stayed mm -hmm. on campus and and we fucked the same girl for the whole year, maybe two, maybe three. But it wasn't like at Whittier College. And uh, but uh, she said, no, 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 no. Was it good at least? Huh? Was it good at least? I didn't hit that night. She wouldn't let me hit. She said it stink. <laughs> you know, I was at the point of no return. I'm just keep it a buck. I wasn't like I was at the point of no return. So, you know, I mean, I had to, you know, I mean, I had, you know, I mean, so but it was just funny. Like she said, no, not tonight. And in and, and her Spanish hand languages and shit like that. <laughs> she had a, a loaf of wet bread in her drawer. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had been working all night and shit. Probably I don't know what it was, but man, nah. I would. Yeah, Mister Van Door, I'm a, uh, yeah. We're gonna revisit this in a, in a few in a few days from now, man. And I I run through a couple of stories. SFC Slick, I went with you. Yeah, <laughs> man. Um, I was ready. Yeah, I got a bunch of stories, man. I got a bunch of stories. I tell you. Uh, said, tell her to hop in the shower. Man, look, and if, if she knows it's bad and she's saying no, yeah, take her word for it. I, I'm that shower my, is just gonna get the surface. My last story. This is my last, last story. So I've been going to this bakery since 1993. 1992, I've been going to this bakery, right? It's important. So my best friend Nyron. I'm not sure if y'all met him on the channel yet. Y'all haven't. We've been friends for damn near 30 years now. Wow. And um, so one night I had this. <laughs> I told y'all half this story one time and maybe it'll refresh you. I had this one Latin girl, right? And um, it was Florentine Gardens. That was 18 and over spot. Florentine Gardens. DB. Say it again. Florentine Gardens was 18 and over, right? Yeah. Okay, boom. It was Florentine Gardens. I remember it. It was Florentine Gardens, or it was either that 18 and over club at, at Highlands. It was one of them. It was one of them clubs, right? And so I'm hollering at the girl, and she says something to me, and I'm like, I got this bitch. She says, I want to eat where the white people eat at. I don't like, she says, I don't like McDonald's. I want to eat where the white people eat at. And I'm like, oh, oh she's dumber than a bag of rocks, right? So, and anyways, long story short, I had a futon at my boy's crib. Nyron, I, I had a futon, right? I had a fut futon. I bashed this girl head in on a futon, right? And, uh, but me and me and my boy Nyron, because I, I go to his place on the weekends, so we will be in the same room. I have a futon and he has a bed, right? And niggas and niggas smash her on the futon. So I smash her on the futon, right? So on Sunday morning, Sunday morning, I would always go to this bakery. Always go to this bakery. It's just, I've been going to this bakery since 1992. So, and I still go to this day. And uh, so I go to this bakery. And um, I come back. I don't, I, we had pagers then. I think we had pagers. We had pagers and I get a 911 text. 911, whatever it is. What's it called? When you pay, oh, it's called a page, right? When, when you pay someone, I'm like, holy shit. I come hustling back from the bakery and shit. What the fuck is going on? This nigga, this, my nigga, man, my nigga slid up on her, right? I don't give a fuck. The nigga slid up on her, right? And he's getting ahead, right? Guess what happens? DB, say, guess what? Say what? Yeah, what? She started having a seizure. Oh, no. <laughs> swear to God. Swear to God. Swear to God. Swear to God. <laughs> so this nigga, this no thing, swear to God. Swear to this is the last story I'm going to tell you. So, anyways. I can't, I can't make this shit up. This is the God on beepers. That's, that's what it's called. So she was having a seizure, right? He had a panic attack. He texts me, come get your girl. I'm like, so I get, so I run in the house and shit. I run in the house and, uh, uh, he's like, man, get her out of here. I had an Oldsmobile Omega. 
I had an Oldsmo. I had a blue Oldsmobile Omega. I remember this shit because she lived off of the 10 freeway and I had to drive back to Whittier. I remember this shit like it was yesterday. And and so I'm driving in the car and I'm like, what happened? She was like, uh, I didn't take my medicine because she was out all night. You get what I'm saying? And uh, so long story short, she was epileptic. Yep, she was epileptic. And because she was on a one night stand, she didn't have her medicine with her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't make these stories up, dog. I'm telling you, man, truth is stranger than fiction, dog. Truth is man. stranger than fiction, man. Man, I wish yeah. I could tell y'all the woman I pulled out of Century Club, dog. I wish. Man, it's going to be in my book. If I make it to 80 years old, I'm airing everybody out. I don't give a fuck. They old and wrinkly and shit. I'm airing everybody out. When I, If I get 80 years old, make sure y'all buy my book. Oh, I'm airing everybody out. Fuck. If I remember, if I remember their names. Oh, man. Nah, I don't, listen, I don't really need that, that long. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> man. Once we go mainstream, it's a wrap. <laughs> I got, man, I'm telling you, I got, I, I'm just going to say this. Whoever your favorite person is, Fred probably touched him. If they lived in LA, I'm just, I'm I'm not lying, dog. Like my boy Nyron would be so amazed at me, dog. He'd be like, how did you, I just knew how to talk. I ain't going to lie to y'all niggas. I just knew how, I, God gave me that, God gave me that gift to talk calmly and direct and I don't know, but yeah, true story. No lie. And I will remember numbers the first time. You know how because I had to remember. See, I come from the era where you had to remember numbers. Like y'all niggas don't have to remember numbers because y'all got cell phones and shit. But I had to remember numbers and shit. And they had to call and they had to call like my my dorm room number. You know what I mean? And oh my god. And I had a pager and shit. Oh, that shit was, man, life. <laughs> Write it down, Fred. I'm remember that shit. If I get eighty, I'm airing. I'm airing them holes out. They not holes, but it just sounds good because I got an ego right now. I'm I'm feeling real big right now and shit. But yeah, it was man. I fucked so many celebrities, dog. It's not even funny. Man, listen. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm a. I'm gonna air some people out. Um, as long as they are not in a relationship, no, don't don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Wait till you're 80, dog. Wait till you're 80. They nobody no, gonna care. No, no, no. It, it, the significance ain't gonna be there no more. Like uh, <laughs> if, if I'd have mentioned something like three years ago, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Some people would have been like, What? But if I say that same person name now, half the people will be like, Wait, who is that? And then you gotta be like, Oh, this show and whoop de whoop, and you know what I'm saying? You gotta kind of explain it so it don't do no good to talk about it at 80 you know what i'm saying like yeah that ain't no 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 if you if you single yeah uh -huh. then that's it because yeah. i mean put it this way um these probably me i still need a couple of weeks man i, I got yeah i can't have this uh or maybe yeah, i'll wait till i'm 90. i'm never gonna tell the stories i'm just making shit up i'm I don't know what Jay Dixon say though. What Jay Dixon say? Because Patty Dean say facts. Jay Dixon. No, nah, I ain't never mm -hmm. had Neil Long. I never met her, but I got. He said, "Don't, he said, don't pull a Quincy Jones." Uh, what did Quincy Jones do? He wrote a tell-all book. I don't know, but I seen something on YouTube where he tried to pull a lollipop out of LL Cool J mouth and put it in his mouth. No, he didn't. At like the American Music Awards or the Soul Train Awards, one of them award shows. Nah. Yeah, nah. he was trying to put his light pop out and put it in his mouth. Mm. Nah, that ain't cool. Mm. Nah. Yeah, nah. so I don't know, but uh, I, I've been to Quincy Jones' house before, man. Oh, and, really? Uh, what time did you yeah, leave in yeah. the morning? A, say it again, I'm sorry. What time did you leave in the morning? Uh, Probably about three. <laughs> yeah, so um, his his wife, so this is crazy, uh, I don't, I don't mean I don't think it's putting his business out there, but his house is connected to his ex-wife's house. They're back to back. Oh wow! Okay. So let's, say, so let's say your house is right there where it is, and then there's a bridge that goes instead of like just instead of the space in between houses. 
Well, there's a space between the house, but then the next, your neighbor's house is Dre's house. Mm-hmm. But there's a bridge that goes from, from the second level it. to her second level. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's almost like, a, you know, they got the hotels where the, where the door connects the two rooms. Pac said, Pac said uh, he was gay. He was fruity. Patty Dean said that's factual information. I don't know nothing about it. I ain't... Yeah. I mean, I've been yeah. to Shamar Moore's house. Shamar's Moore parties. And... Yeah. That, nigga's a we- that nigga's a weirdo. I'm just going to tell you, that nigga's a weirdo. Oh. Shamar Moore, he's a weirdo. Straight weirdo. Different kind of dude. Oh, uh, yeah. I believe it. Yeah, no, yeah. I know it. I saw it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, who, who a real punk though is Tyson Beckford. He he uh, I don't he know a him. real. Punk. I don't know him. I I party with him a lot though. He was in his prime when I was in college. You know what I mean? So in my early twenties yeah. and shit. Yeah. You know how you you remember when you was training? See, because I still got people. So you know when you you know anybody that 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 has anything where you got a sales job or you a trainer or anything where you even like ppd where you one-on-one with somebody yeah and their session is an hour but you know like after um after you show them what you need to show them and and they got the basics of like the fundamentals of whatever the exercise or whatever the, the routine is then that there comes the personal conversation and some people once they open up that well man once they open up that like flip that top open. I mean, they just it's just running like water. They just tell you their whole life story. So you know, you'll have somebody to be like, yeah, and I got you know, I got curious, and this happened, and what did And uh, the only person I've ever been with was Tyson Beckford, and you go, whoa, like you know, they telling somebody else business too. You know what I'm saying? But you just not like, okay, uh huh. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah in your mind, your mind is busting yeah. like fireworks, and shit. Like, oh shit. Oh damn. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but, uh, and, and I heard about this dude from like five different people so mm-hmm. man but these punks man these dudes be coming back around to these women man listen if you're a punk man go on and, go on and punk somewhere else but mm-hmm. leave these women alone like quit quit bouncing back and forth yeah <laughs> yeah I don't have yeah. no gay st- I don't really have no gay stories from men I don't really have any of those like and, and I trained a lot of a lot a lot of celebrities Mostly yeah. basketball players, though, not like actresses and all that. But uh, dudes out there getting chili dogs and bringing them back to their wives. <laughs> oh, disgusting, disgusting. Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? that visual was too much, dog. Well, who said that? Shit? Damn. Uh, Trent Dolan, salute to Trent Dolan. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Oh, man. I don't know how old everyone is, man. We vary in age, but hit the subscribe button and come back and tell us your age on Sunday. Uh, I don't know, man. It's just... Uh, exactly, as that. Exactly. Well, as that yeah. say, facts, dude. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's... Uh, man. Imagine. You, you know what? I will... Man, I wish I... Oh, they got those voice recorders and shit. You know what I mean? You can make them alternate voices and shit and tell the stories and shit. Oh, man. <laughs> I've seen a lot of shit, too, now, because I hang out with a lot of NBA players every summer. Every summer. Oh, man, you should see them motherfucking. Man. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, Jarvis want to call in? Jarvis, you want to call in, big homie? Oh, yeah. Come on, get in, JJ. Yeah. What you about to call in and say? It got to be a good story because this nigga never called in. Go ahead, call back, Jarvis. I'll call you, man. I'll call you. Yeah, JJ got good stories. Oh, it's calling on your end. I'm like, what the hell is that? Nah. What up? You got a story for us, man? I would have just called in to say, ugh, for that chili dog comment. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Shit. Yeah, yeah, I'm gone. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Peace. 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 JJ, <laughs> fool. Nah. I never really chased. Nah, none that I know of. I, I never really was a fan of, like, all my years. I, I can honestly say I never was a, a fan of, like, I'm going to smash that man's girl. I never was a fan of that. Never really 
d- dove into that. Maybe when, maybe in high school or something like that, but I can't remember. You know, but I, but nah, I, I, I can't say that I did. I know I have because the numbers will prove it. You know, but I don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it wasn't because it wasn't because I mean, I'm, I mean, you guys points in your life where you just don't give a fuck. Like you don't give a fuck when you're 20 years old and you know, what I mean, you're in your 20s. You don't give a fuck about that shit. You know, you know, you just you just in the middle of you just in the middle of the club and getting it in, you know. So but like I, I've never, never really been that guy. I've always been so confident, though. Like, I've never been like, I've always been. I, the numbers and say otherwise. Say it again. <laughs> no, nah, you a fool. You don't want the numbers to say otherwise. Yeah, the numbers will say I probably did, but I don't know. <laughs> they ain't going to tell me. I mean, one night stands and shit like that. They ain't going to tell me. You know what I mean? They out with their girls and shit. And, you know, so I don't know. You know, but. <laughs> Nah, I mean, I think for, for me, I think for dudes that that do that, those are the dudes who ain't really passing passing through much yak. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like that's like a badge of honor for them, you know. And uh, yeah, it was, you know, what I'm saying like I've always been in neighborhoods where it's been plentiful. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And you got to think when you got a whole lot of brothers and cousins. You know what I'm saying? Like <clears throat> it's always gonna be bring a friend, bring yeah. a friend. Yeah, who, who yeah. you coming with? I'm saying I'm over here with a house full of dudes. You know what I'm saying? So like, that <laughs> was cool. I said, I've been rejected by women. It's crazy. <laughs> oh man. Man. <laughs> man, it's funny, man. It's it, it, like it's no man. Hey, we gotta get Tone gotta get an award, man, for being the most honest dude. <laughs> in the oh man. Yeah, oh. man. <clears throat> yeah, man. So yeah. But uh yeah, man, leave these leave these people's uh leave these people's girls alone, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know I have, but it it, it 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 wasn't like a plan of mine, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, man, if a bitch told me she was married in my younger days, I wouldn't have gave a fuck. I'm being honest. Like, I'm not. No, no, I'm, I'm no, not. That, yeah, that's true. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't have gave a fuck. Like, but nah. Like in, in 2021, oh nah, nah, nah. That yeah, that, that, yeah, that comes with a well, lot. You know what I mean? That comes with a lot. Nah, it wouldn't happen now, but. But yeah, man, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, it was good times, man. It's good times, man. Yeah, yeah. It's good times. So what's yeah, up, DB, get man? My, what's up, get man? Get my mind off of this stuff, man. Yeah, Joe Jackson, you down with OPP? <laughs> yeah, you know me. Yeah, man. man. So. Yeah, everybody talking about their prime. Taylor's twenty-seven, my prime. Uh, Pazoris at twenty-nine, my prime. Did I miss a part of the conversation when y'all talking about primes? Yeah, I seen Shawshank Redemption. Well, Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Oh. I'm the most shit I ever saw was Pearl Harbor, though. The what? Pearl Harbor, when he ended up marrying the dude that dies wife and takes to take care of his family. Did you see that? Nah, that sounds like some uh some Academy Award winning stuff. That yeah, you know, that's that basically what it is. Yeah, that's basically. Um, too, yeah, that shit kind of yeah, that shit kind of threw me in a loop, dog. When I was like, that's weird. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I remember. Uh, no, I mean, let me let me get my mind off of this stuff, man. Yeah, we revisit this stuff in a couple of weeks, man. Let me let me stay on track. But uh. <clears throat> All right, I'll have some more stories, but I got hundreds of them, man. So no big deal. I just got to yeah. remember them. Uh, and and I'm, I'm, what else were y'all talking about earlier? What were we talking about with the fights earlier? I'm, I don't, I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I was it a, I, you mentioned something about Floyd. I, I can't remember exactly. Oh, what it was. Floyd has a tougher opponent than Jamal Charlo. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Who is Jamal Charlo fighting? I don't know. Montreal, Mont, Montiel, Jesus Montiel, Juan Montiel. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Got four losses. You got four losses. 
Okay. Who was uh so uh your uncle Bob came in the show and he said we got a big announcement coming up in a couple of days and it's been almost a couple of months now. Yeah, we're gonna get him. I'll we'll get him next month sometime. We ain't had him so, in April yet, huh? That was yeah, March. So who, who uh, Triple B, uh what's going on with Triple B? Who who Bud gonna fight? He in camp. He knows who he's fighting. He in camp. He ain't whenever he's in Colorado, he in camp, so okay. Right, right. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe they'll make the announcement this Saturday. Yeah, Taylor, I'm trying, man. Thank you, PPD. Uh, all right. Well, you know, what, what else is new? Who is, uh, who, by the way, where's Gennady Golovkin? Who is he fighting? I don't know. I forgot about him. Tone, who got, who Gennady Golovkin fighting? He, Gennady Golovkin's still at 160, right? Yeah, he's a champion. Right. So there should be a unification, I mean, uh with uh with Boo Boo. Man, Triple G out here living his best life. Yeah, man. He he made many millions off of fighting nobody and nobody gave him any flack uh until you know, until we did maybe about two years ago, but he went his entire career without fighting anybody and made big millions. I think Triple G worth 30 million or something crazy. Easily. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Matter of fact, let me look at that up real quick. How much can I think is worth? What we at? Uh... Oh, yeah. He said that he's fighting. Oh, yeah. And go put a cup of coffee in the GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. um, he said he's fighting... New Year's Eve. Golovkin? Yeah, New Year's Eve, dog. Oh. What? Let me see. Yeah, this dude, uh, however, wealthyspersons.com is reported that uh, at a whopping $35.8 million as of 2021. Golovkin is worth almost $40 million, and they fought nobody. Ain't that crazy? Man. And these dudes out here struggling. How much the Charlos were? How much, uh, like, Jamal, Jamal, how much you think they worth? I don't think they worth that much. I think they made a lot of money. Jamal Charlo net worth? Two million. Let's see. Wow, so Jamal Charlo net worth eight hundred thousand. Yeah, it, it can't be worth a lot because I, I don't see them. I don't see no entrepreneur. Entre, I don't see no enterprise. Enterprise, you know what I mean? Mm. Dang. Whew. Yeah, that's tough. <clears throat> Who's? I mean, outside of Canelo, who has a uh, trip? What's his name? Daniel, Good luck for me. Daniel Jacobs. That's it. Man, and that's crazy. Yeah, as I said, Gigi is a professional at whooping Uber and cab drivers and sous chefs. <laughs> wow. And Jada said, oh, it's April. Yeah. Yeah, Gigi, you're right, Maurice. Triple G robbed the bank. Yeah. And these people allowed it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's at eight hundred thousand. I just looked it up right now. Let me see. Spence Spence is worth uh, the last time I looked at it before his last fight, he was worth uh, eight million. So I don't know. We shall see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Harold Spence Junior. I don't see no enterprise out of the Charles. I see them spending a lot of money buying a lot of cars and. And traveling, which is a great life to have. I'm not condemning them. I just don't see a lot of like entrepreneurship out of them. You know, like they may have have some that we don't know about, and I hope that they do. Um, but um, no. But Jamel oh. does have a coffee company. He said he started. I don't know what it is, but I remember I, I saw that on his stories. Congratulations to that. All right, that's dope, Jamel. Yeah, Jamel. I don't know if okay. it's a coffee shop or it's actual coffee, but it, it, it it's a business. So, 
Um, but I, I haven't seen Jamal. So I, I don't think that they'll work. Like, if they stop fighting right now, I don't think that they can sustain their lifestyle for, through, perpetu- right, right, right. Through, through perpetuity. I think that they would have to do something else or, or downsize. Man, yeah. Well, they need those big fights. That's what again. So that's why when you have fights oh. like the, the the Demetrius Andre fight, mm-hmm. you know, like man, sometimes you got to swallow your pride, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, he pulled out the fight before. That's true. We all know it, and everybody been giving boo boo hell about that, mm-hmm. you know, for the past however many years. You know what I'm saying? But now it's time to. Uh, what Cube say to Smokey? Man, you better get your off your shoulders and go make that money. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's time to it's time to make those fights. You know what I'm saying get in there with Daniel Jacobs. He pulled up on you backstage. Y'all had y'all little run in. Like get that. This dude is about about 40 years old now. He, his yeah, time gonna fact. be over soon. It's definitely lose, time. Lose out on mm-hmm. You need to use that as leverage. If this was the if this was MMA, if this was the UFC, that altercation right there, that back altercation would be all over social media, all over YouTube, all over every marketing, every marketing piece that they have. And that right there will build the fight. Mm. You constantly keep saying uh, him t- look over his shoulder, look over his shoulder, rubbing his hands together, licking his chops like, oh, well, look, what do we have here? Look who I run into. You know, that'll be everywhere. And that will build the fight. People will go, oh, was he scared? No, he ran up on him. No, he was there to go see him. And then, yeah, that's going to build the fight. But you know your time gonna pass, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying who's who's who another one? Like, listen, you need to do whatever you need to do to fight Triple G. And yeah, maybe you don't get the money that you want, but it's gonna be a whole lot of people because it's gonna be that race element that's involved, that race component, which is gonna make people buy the fight. So you get your pay per view points. You know, Triple G ain't selling when he when he fighting. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Who who did I say earlier? Uh, Chico Ramirez. He ain't finna. Oh, Chico Ortiz, he ain't finna make no money fighting those dudes. Mm. Uh, Kurt, Curtis Stevenson, th- that ain't no pay per views. But if Jamal Charlo and Triple G get in the ring, oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, everybody want to see that 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 melanated dude get beat up. You know, especially he 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 really is the villain now. He villainized himself. Yeah, people want to see him lose, so they gonna pay that money. So go in there and get your bread. Right. You know. You're going to ask for $10 million. They're going to say they want to give you two. Y'all settle for three. Take that three. Pocket it. Get them, get those pay-per-view points. You know, and uh, yeah. But fighting against Sebastian Highland on pay-per-view, that ain't going to get it. Nobody's going to purchase that. Fighting against, uh, 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 what's his name? Not Paul Hogan. Uh, Hulk Hogan. What's one of them Hogan's? Daniel, Daniel Hogan? That was his name? Dennis Hogan. Dennis right? Hogan, yeah, there you go. Yeah, like see stuff like that. Like nobody's gonna purchase those. And two years ago, even maybe up until a year ago, right before this thing started, you could have still got away with stealing pay per views from people. But now, it ain't gonna happen. You got to fight a name. And it's got to be a, a, a relatively big name, but. You know, we shall see, man. Hopefully, uh, I, I hope that he got a coffee shop and coffee for uh, Jamel. You know, I think it's maybe a little different when you see EJ got a ranch and you see Derek James got little stuff that he's doing. You know, that's good. That's that's the positive influence that he needs. You know, but so hopefully uh, that'll that'll rub off on his brother too. But uh, right here, Maurice just said that EJ is worth $8 million. I don't have anything that's new, but this is old because it's not showing the last two fights. So, <clears throat> Yeah, but I, but, but I did see Jamel sell a house. Remember he was building up his fight? Remember he sold a house with him and his son on his, on his YouTube page? Did you see that? No, I didn't see it. Yeah, he, he sold a house to a family, so, which is, so he may be in the real estate. That's beautiful. Keep on, keep on, keep on keeping on, man. That real estate ain't no joke, so. Uh, appreciate you, DJ. Jamal reportedly sent sent Triple G two fight offers, and he turned it down. I don't believe that. I don't believe that one bit. We would have knew about that. That shit would have made headline news. I, I heard that come out like a month ago. I think that was fake news. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, let me see. Why Richard said J Rock in the real estate in Philly. Yeah, J Rock. Fred was out there with him, as a matter of fact. Yeah, uh, yeah. Did y'all yeah. go to some of their properties too? Yeah, 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 yeah. We drove by a few. Yeah. 
and uh yeah they're doing great things him and bread man doing great things down there man shout out to we gotta get bread man back in the shop damn bread man dope yeah yeah man. Bread man dope. yeah bread man dope so Jimmy dixon said uh he did fight steve rose though yeah steve <laughs> rose man out of, out of nowhere yeah that's a fact yep let me see uh uh let's see as doc said i thought al got the trellos in the real estate down in houston i think they own a few properties and i think jay dix i'm sorry uh boxing truth sam said the same thing i believe the trellos on real estate i mean possibly you know what i mean but uh if it's down there in texas you know the property ain't that the property ain't that that crazy especially for the money they making they making they right. making hollywood money yeah they making california and new york and miami money yeah, and, and right. money uh, over, over there so yeah they they should get over here and buy i mean there's real estate fred tell them how how often do you drive down the street where you see a new building being built just in la alone mm -hmm. often i mean it's just stuff going up all over the place they could buy a little condo that's directly across the street from the staples center or uh, uh um, i mean anywhere there's so many that's and and he's going to be in these crazy areas as a matter of fact in the rams new stadium they got some right on the back of that anywhere but just a little small one it'll be expensive you know for for the uh like the value is not going to be great right what they're used to they're used to spending you know uh a hundred and fifty thousand dollars in texas that's gonna get you something nice right right hundred fifty thousand out here you're gonna be in somebody's room <laughs> you know renting it but if they get something like that man it's gonna turn over crazy in like four or five years mm -hmm. right yeah right but, uh, right no, Jay. So. Yeah, Jay Dixon. You're right. Caleb Plant got to step up his opponent, but you know, like he's not part. I mean, yeah, he got to he got to step up his fight too. But he got Canelo in September, so we'll see how that turns out. You know, he's a clean fighter. Canelo about to come in juice to the gills against that dude. Man. Oh, he clean. He brags about being clean. Oh man, we ain't worried about him. <laughs> we got that dude. Oh man. Oh yeah, that's gonna be easy. You know, what I mean, he gonna come in juice to the gills against Caleb Platt <laughs> for sure. Yeah. You know, Caleb Plant takes pride in only being ten pounds overweight, being disciplined, being a good kid. You know, he does his quality opponent is very questionable the last year, or and um, yeah. Let me see. Uh, Kim Lon John said, Austin, Texas is the new hot market for real estate because all the tech companies mm -hmm. moving out there. Yeah, Joe Jack, uh, echo those sentiments. He said, Austin, Texas is a hot place. People have been moving there too. Uh, a la Elon Musk. Uh, okay, yeah. I mean, I knew Austin was, uh, I know Austin is a nice looking place. The last time I've been there, about four or five years ago. Uh, but yeah, I didn't know it was blowing up like that. That's good. Box of Truth Serum said the Renaissance blew up by the Ram Stadium. Man, it's crazy over there. It went from, uh, you know, semi decent to yeah, it's crazy over there. Yeah. Yeah, H Money. Lolo, man. Uh, we got to figure out where that fight's going to be at, though. I think it's going to be on Facebook, but uh, we need to figure that out so we can start tagging it and putting it all over the place because everybody needs to see Lolo. Uh, get down this weekend and uh, Jalen uh, had a split draw in his fight uh, Jalen Walker today and uh, you know uh, one thing I like about Jalen you know he said uh, you know I figured I had myself up somewhere between two and four rounds but you know that's what I get for letting it, letting it go to the judges and that's, that's a learning lesson for me you know what I mean and uh, yeah man we got some talent coming out of SoCal man you know what I mean so we, we, we getting ready to be back on top again once these young dudes hit the pros Yes, indeed. All right, man. Let's uh, get out of here. Been, yeah, we've been all right. Let's run through it, bro. Bro, who you want to get some love to? Let's get Dante Williams. What's up, man? I do want to see Charlo Plant for sure. For sure. What's up, Rob G? Warren Richards, Rob G, Big Texas, aka Cletus, man. Man, what's up? We got H Money, man. Appreciate you, man. And everybody else, man. Thanks for coming in this week, man. We're gonna we gonna have some fun Sunday. We got uh Frank Martin coming in on Sunday and uh yeah we're gonna rock out we're gonna rock out you know what i mean yeah right on um, well man let me give the brothers and the sisters and the rest of the family and people that came to the shop some love today is thursday but that means in the barber shop it's a friday we off tomorrow we <laughs> off the following day but it's tons of mma 
tons of boxing yeah. and just combat sports all over the place for the next uh, three days or two and a half days, man, uh, tune in to everything, man. Look at, look on social media, That's look on right. YouTube. All of the brothers will probably be doing something. Reggie Owens, uh, H money, uh, Kyle, the boxing section. So keep your eyes peeled, man. And, uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be fellowshipping and, and, and rocking and rolling. Oh, I also want to mention this too, man. Uh, for all of the people who are here in Southern California, make sure that you guys are here in Los Angeles on May 1st. Make sure you are here. Even if you're 40, 50, 60 years old, we want numbers out there. Now, the, the event is going to be for the young man, but the support will be great. We want people to understand when they come out here, this is a whole different ball game. So we need to make sure that we are in attendance. Yeah, and it gives us a chance too, man. We've been in a pandemic for a while, you know. We've been uh, quarantining and whatnot, so you know, y'all come through with your business cards and and all of that, man. And you know, we can we can uh, what Fred say, uh, swallow spit and talk a little. Ugh. So anyhow, man, that's it. And uh, let's get a brothers and sisters some love. And first and foremost, shout out to the OG Queen Patty Dean, LA's finest, Inglewood. Flowers all over your feet, Queen. Let's see. H20 Boxing in the building. Shout out to California, Chicago, and Arizona. My cousin SSCs are in the building. Salute to Mike Weary the Great. Money in the Ghetto. Salute to you. OG, Big Rob G Film, South Central Zone, Jarvis Johnson, JJ in the building. He said, no chili dogs, bro. Uh, Mark Fraylin in the building. Salute. He said, salute to the barbershop. Yes, indeed. Bird, man. Salute, Bird, man. Appreciate you. Tone Brown in the building. Tone and block somebody. He said, get out of here with the nonsense. Kevin Adams said, salute to you, Kev. My brother YV, salute to my brother Yoba, California's finest, holding it down in the north side. Valley and prize fights. He said, New York real estate is a Swiss bank account. Just hold it there. Yeah, man. I understand. Uh, Warren Richards in the building. Salute to you, Dante Williams. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dante Williams, Dante. Does that look like a... Uh, is that Leonard Ellaby over there on the, on the picture? Oh, he's, he's from Linux. So make sure you come out. Make sure you get us Leonard Ellaby. Yeah, make sure you come out. Make sure you come out. Is his name... Is that's real, a real Dante Williams? Yeah, because you know that Dante, uh, Box Nation, Dante... Is, oh, that's his name too, right? Dante, right? Yeah. That's his name too. Yeah, yeah. So... Thought somebody was just being a troll. But salute to Big Texas ATX Cletus Smith. Cletus, shout out to Phantom Brawler oh. Hawthorne in the building. He said, I ain't trying to see planning Canelo. Yeah, I see uh, you. I think that's gonna be a good fight, man. If Caleb can get his physical strength up for that fight, shit. Yes, if, yes, if, yes. If. Can yeah. we trust Caleb Plant to go in there? Because what's gonna happen? Look, let me let me just say this real quick. If Caleb Plant get in there with Canelo and Canelo beat on him, then that's going to be uh, Canelo's excuse saying, see, I fought who y'all wanted me to fight, and I destroyed him. So there it goes. Let me fight another couple of – let me fight six or seven more cans before you guys put more pressure on me again. I mean, Caleb so, got a belt, though. It's, I mean – No, no, I, I understand. Okay, I understand. okay. I understand. So it could be about belts or it could be about good fights. Like good competitive I'm giving them credit for beating Plant right now, today. I'm giving them – but but if Plant going in and is a shell of himself, then he w- he, w- he no. wasn't really that good, right? But but I think yeah, Caleb Plant's gone. If if he can get it, if he I I think he's gonna look good for six the first six rounds. I think Caleb Plant's gonna be in the fight, may even be up four rounds or two. You know, but that I think there's a strength differential there that Caleb Plant's gonna have to find a way to compensate for. You know, so and rest in peace. Yeah, yes. if, if he if Caleb Plant get beat by Canelo right now. Yeah, I give Canelo credit for that. You know, but uh I, I I'm not sure if I trust Caleb Plant just yet. I'm I might need to see him fight one more time, you know, to, to trust that his hands not gonna get weak. Is that my brother T dub in the building? Tay Walker, salute, salute. What up with you, bro? Uh Joe Jack in the building, salute to you. DJ, DJ uh, did you see that super chat from DJ earlier? He said Jamal Troller reportedly sent GGG a two fight offer. Yeah, yeah. And uh I don't believe that. that. Okay. I don't believe it. That's why I told him I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Riff King in the building. He said David Benavidez is a name. Yeah, that's that's a fact. David Benavidez is a name, Riff. You 100% correct on that. 
at that riddle four five j a dixon salute to y'all brothers uh let me see we got let me see what's that president jafar president jafar salute and uh, welcome to the show welcome to the show austin barnett salute to you cuz i see you mike jones who mike jones in the building bingo og he said he seems scared of jacobs man you know listen you saw with your own eyes right cool really you try to get the pet man listen we gave it the pass because no i don't know no no plant what kayla plant no 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 no, 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 no oh no, no, i'm about no. to say i missed that shit because kayla plant don't back down that's what that would have shocked me oh okay, okay. so uh, again like uh bingo said he seemed scared when uh when Jacobs ran up on him in the hallway, you talking about you talking about Charlo, right? Hey, you know who 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 did he meet in the hallway? Okay, now I'm just confirming yeah, because we were talking about Plant. Yeah, okay, yeah, he no, did. No, he, he, he was shook a little bit. He was shook a little bit. He was. He Hold on, let me finish saying this. Yes. At the time when we when we thought it was, you know, what I'm saying the the lions uh, or the king of the right. jungle, everybody was like, it ain't no way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if it's an elephant. Lion ain't running from nothing, right? Lion finna get down, right? And then in the, as time passed and we start seeing some of the traits different, like, hold on, is that a lion or is that a dog with a, with a fake mane on his head? So, you know, when you look back at it now, you go, wow, mm-hmm. I see something. Yeah. yeah. And they yeah. said we can't keep Jamal uh Jamal the excuse of Andre Duck and his brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta get in there and squad. Yes, yeah, that's, that's old to- news. That shit is a half a decade old, man. Come on, man. Shout out to Bingo. Welcome to the show, Bingo OG. Welcome to the show. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up too. Hit the yeah. thumbs up too. JQ. Oh, I didn't even see that. JQ got wrenched up. Shout out to the shy Jaquan Fix in the building. Yeah, right on. Uh, let me see. Maurice McElroy, salute. Tino the Great, see you in the building too. We got Kev already. Let me see. Uh, Junior Delgado, he said, Maurice, if Canelo falls into a effing mountain, is Jamal Charlo going to do it if he needs to do it? Oh, he cursing too much. Uh, I see my bro in here. P. Good, salute P. Good. And uh, SF City Slicker Kai, right on. I see y'all, man. Everybody going to hit that thumbs up real quick, man. Ain't going to take but a second. Brother Cole 10 and Mr. Tennessee himself, Hustler Slam, my brother boxing conversations with Reggie Owens. Look, Reggie said, no, nah, lions run from elephants. <laughs> Look, Reg, no, Reg, you posting all kind of animal stuff. Man, I'll be watching that stuff at 3, 4 in the morning to see Reg post animals and stuff, animal kingdom. Shout out to KJ, Kenline Jones, I see you. Uh-oh, we got somebody new, Marvin Rollins Jr., welcome to the show. Welcome to the show! Yeah. All right, man. I think we done covered everybody up. Oh, no, nope, there go one right there. Uh, Renee Jones said, uh, Logan Paul KO. Okay. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. I was reading Birdman's comment oh. on the cows. I'll definitely be over there. I got to figure yeah. out how to comment on my TV. I'll be in bed watching. I'll be wanting to comment because y'all be talking some bullshit. And and I be wanting to comment, but I can't comment because I be in bed and shit, man. My phone be on the other side of the room, and I ain't going. Nah, I so I just sit there and I just listen to y'all niggas just talk nonsense, and I be wanting to respond. But yeah, hey, look, I be the same way, bro. I will be over here, and I'm like, I'm reading and, and listening to you know to, to brother Malcolm and, and, and Doctor College and all of that, right? And I just I, I take a little break and I I look in the comment section. I want to say something, but then. You know, somebody gonna say salute, and I'm not gonna be looking at my phone no more. They're gonna be like, "DV acting crazy." <laughs> <laughs> no, I, but I, I fall asleep with TV on every night anyway. Basically, so it'd be on YouTube and shit. And uh, I, I, I would have any videos I don't watch that I ain't watched. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, you can't on Bluetooth. What do you mean on Bluetooth? Get you a USB mouse keyboard. Oh. I have one now. I have this. But oh, this is the mouse. But then you got a point, point, point. Nah. Get me a USB keyboard. That might okay. I'll look into that. Hey, that's funny. This is a troll because he said I'm from I just saw what you said earlier. He said I'm from Linux. Dante from Linux mm-hmm. too. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that watch me for sure. 
Uh, I see all my MMA brothers in the building, man. I see DJ still in here. Uh, let me see. Uh, we said what's up to Kev already. Picasso in the building. Oops. Uh, in shape street fighter salute to you i see you in the building too uh yeah ss man uh big rest in peace to shock g man absolutely absolutely the one oh, that put the satin on your panties sandals. that's my favorite line the one that put the satin on your panties yeah signature sound salute to you he said did, uh, did caleb take care of that injured hand yet he's, i mean he well, had six months off him. january to september yeah. he's off so he's good he's, he, he has no choice you know, because yeah. he's he didn't take it on five weeks notice or six week notice. So I thought he should have took the fight in December. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh Matrix Arden slid back in the building. Dave Jack 313. Boxer sparring Gump 88. Salute to you. Salute to the night 209. Hey, Gump also too. Gump like Reg too. He'd be posting a gang of funny stuff every single day. He posts a gang of crazy funny stuff. Uh, yeah, PPD, you be seeing that too, Reg, uh, with the crazy Animal Kingdom videos, man. Sign of the Times, TVHQ, salute, salute. Hotel Shalom in the building. He said, and this is what it feels like, man. Uh, that nip, yeah, yes, indeed. Hey, can I hear? Can I hear that nip real quick? And this is what it feels. Like. And this is what it feels like. Ah, uh, there you go, man. We're gonna slide over to the brother Kyle's. Uh, how do I say? It? Does it sound like Kyle? Kyle. Kyle, say his name. Kyle. Kyle. Okay, cool. So, what's that? What animal goes moo? What, what is that? Cow. <laughs> so, what's the difference? One is C O W. The other one is K Y L E. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, um, um, I don't know. <laughs> you got that Denise Williams the past couple of days. Ooh. Instead of Rosetta Stone, you got Denise Williams and shit. Hey, what is that called? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what word did you tell me the other day? Overflow, overflown, overflow, overflow. overflow. What's overflown? Uh, some yeah, shit you yeah, said. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Whatever. It was. The toilet and it overflow. I remember <laughs> my white boyfriend, right? Up, my white boyfriend. Uh, He's a part of my accountability team too, and what? My accountability team. We all went to college together. So yeah, anyway, you said your white what? My white boyfriend. My white. Oh fuck you, nigga. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, <my> god. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, clip this. Oh my god. So, anyways, <laughs> my. See, I didn't want to use the N word. I didn't. I didn't want to use the N word with white boy. You know what I mean? So, but anyhow, so he he always gets me. Reggie he's, like coon. <laughs> is that what he said? Is that what he said? Oh, Reg wasn't here when I told him that I was right. But but we'll uh we'll, we'll take care of that another day. But anyways, uh, he always gets me because I say axe. Huh? We say ask axe axe. He always talks about axe. What are you talking about, axe? So, anyways, you know he corn. He cornier than me. So, uh, so imagine that. Berman says. <laughs> you oh man! Oh, that's yeah, the yeah, worst. Hey, that's right, big bro. Look, that's the worst moment in the history of this show. That's the worst yeah. moment in the history of the show. That's my worst moment ever. Yeah, SS Caesar. Yeah, he said it, man. Play the song, son! Oh, man. Damn, man. My feelings hurt, dog. My feelings hurt, man. You're getting European chili dogs. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. oh. <laughs> Oh my god, dog. Oh. oh my god. Fuck, man. I'm low key nervous. Hey, so anyways, uh the X the X for boy. <laughs> now everything sounds funny. You know, anyways, we got a workshop May 1st, 1 to 3 30. Tell a friend, man. Gospel 
Mission Baptist Church, man. 7301 South Avalon, man. I used to go to that damn gas station when I was a kid on Florence and Avalon and get hot dogs. No lie. True story. <laughs> Hey, I thought you didn't believe in that in that pause. I thought you didn't believe in that pause culture, man. What's wrong with you? Uh, everything sounds funny now. I'm just gonna shut up, nigga. We got my mic. People Hernandez in the building. People Hernandez in the building. People Hernandez. I ain't saying shit. <laughs> oh my god! Damn, dog, it's over. 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 Cal, drop the link. Somebody put the link to uh, the boxing section in. It's over. over for me. Rob It's over. Damn, dog. No wonder why Aram and Suleiman are returning. <laughs> Illegal Tender. Change your name, though, man. At least you can't call Legal Tender and and, 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 and do them type of jokes. You gotta be. You gotta have a masculine name like uh like uh. Was, like yeah, like like Debo Rocky, like Rocky Debo. <laughs> they got to be over masculine, like you overcompensate. You know what I mean? Oh, that shit was disgusting. That was literally the the, the funniest <laughs> moment of my life. <laughs> I feel sick. I feel. Uh, you should. I do. Hated it. <laughs> that disgusting. Yeah, you definitely can shave it. No, I ain't cutting it off, nigga. You know what I mean? Love y'all, man. That shit sound gay. All right. Holla at y'all, man. Peace, man. Hey, check this out. Google moderator just deleted my message. <laughs> <laughs> what it say? What it say? No, it was, just, it was just a link to the to the channel. Oh yeah, they. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one that can post the links then. Oh man, that's disgusting, man. That's fucking disgusting. All right, love y'all, man. <laughs> peace, man. Peace, uh, peace, gay. Love you too, man. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.